recording. So oh. this is this is test run one at the object uh, relationships that I'm thinking of. Um, so we have like this central object called referenceable to which everything is going to uh, reference um, in general. Um, some get more specific with what they reference, others are more generic. So that's the idea there. Um, so the specifics cool. so far are pretty, the, the, the specifics so far are going to be like the embedded things that we're going to have, like a hashtag. Remember um, our conversation yesterday where uh, yeah. we marked off the, uh, I guess we marked off which cards are in use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the anything referenceable, anything pointing with that, um, arrow kind of uh, thick arrow kind of deal is going to be um, an extension of this idea of a referenceable. So first one we have is agency, um, one of which is human. Um, we don't have any details for a generic agent, but we do have for a human. Um, what that leads to basically is a human will have uh, profiles, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, these these profiles are another referenceable object. You can see a path here, basic profile is the same idea you got, kind of like a generic profile with an extension of that. Then you have your basic profile details, which reference back to the human, which reference back to the human details. All right. It's all, right. all very, very cool. Um, and then of course this basic profile then provides a credential the credential is what provides your password details, and then it has email and name details as uh, both credential part and uh, the generic information about that profile. And uh, further on, same pattern, um, except we now have a different um, we have what's called an aggregate profile. Mm -hmm. And the aggregate profile is the thing that uh, holds conversations, which yes. are not the referenceable thing. Um, the conversation details points to its aggregate profile and that's how we complete that loop. Um, here's gonna be, of cool. course, messages. Um, messages are gonna be tied into this credentials and stuff like that, so we can trace it back to which profile. Mm -hmm. It's all very, very, the reason it looks like so convoluted for such a simple thing, it's because of this referenceable system. That's, right. that's really, is he having trouble? Uh, hey, talking. Hi. Welcome Good back. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, I missed the rest of that yesterday. I was watching it and I was swearing and going, ah, if I was only there. <laughs> well, here we are though. <laughs> It's all good. It is. It'd be nice it is to get, uh, get meetings like this going uh, more often. It seems like development is progressing and we can chat about all kinds of things. Indeed. So I was, um, uh, yeah, I'm in the stage, I guess, where I have a lot of wheels turning. And so then I'm, I'm trying to extrapolate and yeah, it, trying to mesh all the information, your information and, and, and what, what I'm already have in my mind for, for models and kind of the emphasis that I'm going on, right? Um, mm -hmm. would I be able to kind of go into some notes I have that are not very long at all? Yeah, if you had any questions right. watching that, uh, the, the meeting yesterday, by all I, means. W yeah, and that's kind of part of what it came out of. So, I guess the first, well, are, um, are you recording this? I just wanted to know. Uh, we are recording, yeah. Okay. That's all <laughs> no the problem. <laughs> case. You're online. Oh, that, and that's fine. That's why I just wanted to check. Um, I might just stay audio only a little it's, bit it's if all that's good. Okay. Um, so I think part of the part of the question that I had pop up is that um, first of all, I've run into this bootstrap problem before personally, like seventeen years ago yeah. when I started <laughs> writing something that could theoretically be used to write itself, or the ideas started overlapping quite a bit, and it drove me frankly pretty crazy yeah um. 
and, and it especially people. struck home, I think, when Zenya, you started talking about, um, okay, and I have to be honest, I made it late last night, I was watching this, and I made it uh, quite a ways in, I think, almost uh, two hours, but uh, like an hour 45, maybe. Um, I just didn't quite get all the way all the way through that. So there might be some stuff at the end that you have to catch me up on a little bit. But uh, especially, I think, Zenya, you were when we when you started talking about the field research lab and the ability to basically run uh when both of you started talking about the ability to maybe sort of uh, run protocols out of the field research lab or use that as a feedback mechanism um mm -hmm. that really uh there were a couple things that that spawned off and i guess so what you guys are writing is is it a re repeatable like is there going to be one of these in the world or is this a repeatable software that will connect with other softwares that are like it um in order to link up the various information or is this like the is the portal mountain well first of all i guess we are talking you're talking about a specific portal mountain software at this point or how would you define it um so okay that actually is covered some somewhere somewhere have, later down there's actually that. one comment that i can put in here real quick that may may help clear it up um it um so there's kind of a parallel here we'll see with and what we've been talking about as a platform using a scepter or hollow chain this kind of type of technology okay um, the idea is that you have your own view on the data but the format that the data is taking, in other words, the programs that are intercepting the data and, and, uh, and uh, processing it, those can be verified to have been the same. So you're kind of holding, this is like the hologram type thing, you're holding the same type of software and you're able to verify that that software on somebody else's computer is what, what has been manipulating that data. Um, so okay. you have your own view of the data, unique, unique to yourself. So you have your own view on the network. So there is no master single uh, view of the network. It's each node has to construct the whole thing from nothing. So okay. that's, that, if that and that's the idea. No, that, and that's exactly what I wanted to partially get. I mean, that, that is exactly what I yeah. wanted to get to the heart of as far as the origination of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 uh, it's meant to be like a thing to it's like a DNA code. Say if you want the analogy to like sort of hold a cell together, but whether that cell is part of a colony or not is kind of like a different question. Okay, and it can and, and yes, and the idea isn't to um, to to say to the idea isn't to say authoritatively that it's got to be one or the other. Like you could have a single isolated system all to yourself and whatever you put into it um, is how it's going to function. Right. Um, that's really the idea behind the feedback part. Um, the only thing to that is that you can imagine uh, given the origin of this um, initially that there will be a quote unquote cell to connect to that is representative of our um, uh, version of what there should be, right? Okay. So you will have, per, you'll be pervy to that as well, and what you make of it and how you navigate that is going to be, um, it's going to be reflected back and forth, right? It's um, the the whole question of coherence. There's going to be a question of self coherence. There's going to be a question of the dashboard's coherence, and then there's going to be a mutual. Um, calculation as well are there definitions of the mutual coherence calculation existing already or is that something that needs to be developed it's the uh, terms of uh, code it would have to be developed there's nothing um, okay there's in no terms of idea though there's some idea of how it would work or there's just yeah. the idea that it needs to work so the conversation being the basic unit of the data entry points um or yeah. rather the messages themselves but we'll get to that um but the point being is that these these things get a mark so to speak amongst the people that are participating in it and uh, there's a calculation involved there and so these things will be coherent in the context that they are in but if that happens to be commented on somewhere else and and uh, that conversation uh, sees it differently, you know, like those, uh, mm -hmm. 
depending on which context it's in, it's going to have that value. Um, so coherent here does not mean coherent there kind of deal. But when you get down to, when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, which, you know, obviously there's a lot of different levels that stuff could potentially operate at. And I think the idea is, and the idea you expressed in your software is to be able to adapt to essentially various levels of information within based, the platform you know that's why you have the embassy to the bonfire to the obelisk slash gardens to the field research lab is because those are different levels of working with the information within the platform mm -hmm. um yeah and between but but so you're going to have your own idea of representing that right so in, in this model that is is based off your your, your interpretation of perhaps this this you know 2500 year old model right um we we have this idea of uh, of the portal mountain and um these different areas of discussion and sort of names we're attaching to things and there's a certain number of levels right now someone else could have a different iteration where they name things differently and then maybe even just have different organization entirely maybe they have three levels of information hierarchy instead of four or yeah. whatever different contexts different things that they're labeling exactly. how how what is the common denominating factor that would bring these systems together in order to gain coherence so, um so what the, is the atom they're exchanging so the idea is is to make the software focus ex pretty much exclusively on this feed little tiny feedback loop it has right an unassuming mechanism Right, that basically would allow for pretty much anything, including garbage. Um, and then to sort of bootstrap it with some sort of fundamentals that represent itself so that its internal content and its external structure are like essentially mirror each other, right? Um, so, okay. so this is what we, so that, that's, that's the thing we're trying to give rise to. And then based on that, um, it'll have a kind of a, an initial initial theme um, as to how to best operate with it. The best operation with it is going to be it's right like it's the, it's already presented to you by being represented internally as externally. So hey guys, um, one sec. Um, no, that's fine. Just, just yeah. a quick comment on that. Um, the as far as like when you say uh, what if there's three levels, um, these type. These, this structure is verifiable and it's, in, it's um, supposed to be and can be verified to be isomorphic with, um, we'll just say, the mechanics of perception. Um, so this is, this is a model that can be verified internally through experience. Um, it's, not, it's not arbitrary in that sense, but it, um, I, don't think, I don't know if there's a way to calculate like other than self-verifying as a human being experiencing the program and kind of auditing it yourself um that that should that in itself should converge uh any different iterations or different ideas um if there's enough communication between the the projects and in essence education and um well, yeah, this is why in this particular dashboard, if you um, look at the picture, you'll see that education is the primary uh, mm -hmm. thing highlighted. Yeah, so um, they should converge. And uh, sorry, I'm going to cut out for a second. I'm going to go eat breakfast. So I'll just uh, leave you to to chat for a bit. <laughs> oh, okay. No worries. Yeah. Have any Thank you. That was a good, that was a helpful comment. Thank you. Yeah, cool. All right, be right back. Yeah, so um, clearly Brian and I talk about these things slightly differently. No, and that's and it, I, that's part of where I'm at too. Is trying to adapt the, uh, trying to trying to adapt the the jargon, and I don't mean that pejoratively, but like you know, yeah, yeah. literally, you have your own language for this, and I'm trying to mesh it with my concepts. <laughs> this is something I'm fully aware of. In fact, I've had many a fights about this language. <laughs> yeah, fights over words, humans. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> 
Yeah. It, I, so that's where, obviously, you can tell where I get hung up is like where we're starting to define it. It is the bootstrap problem. I understand that. The, I, you mentioned at one point, you specifically mentioned um, master cards, or, or I, I think that's what you called it, the concept right, right. of immutable cards right right that, the grandmaster the grandmaster yeah the grandmaster level, level. um so i is that what we're really going after is essentially the definition of the grandmaster level immutable cards so grandmaster comes from uh, the portal mountain coherence speak uh stuff uh just for reference okay um, and it's and it comes from like again perceptive stuff so you're you're mastering something and then the grandmaster is one who has mastered sure all, all the understood things. um in this case, we're looking at a computer platform. So it's basically, we're talking about root access type stuff. Um, okay. So it's, it's just a basic um, imbuing um, the, uh, the, uh, st the actual functional structure of it with the content that's pro being processed to be mirrored in it, if that makes sense. So that... Um, if you were to change using the system part of this content, you will see that change reflected back in your interface. Okay. So these are, if, if you're using more traditional computer language, you might say we're talking about configuration files. Yeah, but the configuration files is, it's a, it, it, the configuration file is its, itself, right? Like, program is processing its own, only its own configuration file in that sense and all you're doing with it is essentially in that if you want to take it that route is sitting there and configuring it by typing messages to other people oh yeah yeah <laughs> this oh. is where how you talk about things or how one talks about things but yeah um it's a very very like um layered um, thing it's not it's by by no means a simple idea um, no I, I i don't think it is yeah um and i maybe that's where i struggle with it is the degree to which i guess having gotten stuck in these loops before maybe i'm looking to short shortcut it a little bit and that's not obviously what what you're all after um uh, yeah there's some some simple fundamentals but i like there's like a particular structure that so the the hierarchical structure like you could you could maybe use different names but essentially in order to use in order to gain coherence with another system that it has to have enough of the model in other words it would have to have an equivalent to an embassy a bonfire um an obelisk and a in a right. research lab right it's it, it's like meshing two different species together you know um <laughs> well and well and that's where that's exactly where i'm headed is yeah how do you what are the what are the basic requirements and i was thinking well so, the, the requirements is is within the atom of the conversation id and and perhaps in some sort of coherence with higher level constructs that are based on that but if we're saying you need the actual same model um, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I, I'm just talk. I'm talking through some of this right now, obviously. So, you know, I don't, maybe, you know, it, I said, well, what if there's a different number of hierarchies, you know, maybe that is, you know, part of the core requirement is no, there's, there's four, you know, there's four levels of information and then there's different context, you know, but then do the context names need to match? Do we need to start to come up with essentially the Dewey Decimal of contexts? you know so, or okay so i think we're just getting way too uh we're, we're talking about the different layers of concerns here okay um, the dashboard uh the, the entire conception of the dashboard and originates let's just backtrack a little bit um okay. we were um we were discussing the our mimetics model um me and brian that is Right. And we were trying to see how to export that into something that's less mental and more um, social. Okay. And it was at that time I started reading about Scepter. And Scepter had an incredibly unique and wonderful idea based on the same principles of the strange loop. Uh, yeah. With regard to connecting like all of these receptors together, right? And so... 
that's how the guild system was born out of that. And the guild system is essentially what you're seeing as in those words, education and then immunity and then, um, okay. And then, uh, environment and all of these. So these are our guilds. They're called natural guilds in this, uh, schema. Um, so these guilds are actually like receptors in the sense that they are kind of like all part of this giant networked hologram of things communicating with each other based on these protocols internally. Right. So that's how, it's, right. that's how the guild system is conceived. And this dashboard is continuing uh, this process, right? So um, you can essentially assume that this dashboard assumes it's running in a receptor. Okay. Right. And, and that's where, okay. I never saw the scepter requirements, yeah. you know, because I, yeah, but, and I, I sort of tried to chase after that, but then I was confused as to where the development of that really went. Yeah. A lot of it's but, still in my head, you know, like it's, it's, it's hard enough to like find interested parties to communicate this to. So it's not something I just, uh, that's, that's just mentioned all the time, but that, that's kind of like the, uh, background behind it all. And, uh, the structure that you're seeing is uh, very much influenced by, by what I've, so it's, it's feedback basically right back into it. Um, okay. And ultimately, like if I were to tickle my fantasy bone a little bit, ultimately like this kind of a thing will sit in the receptor and uh, you could potentially use it to manipulate the receptor network itself, you know? Um, and then, uh, yeah, like it, it's it's basically like an um, a means for it to like gain an artificial intelligence, if you want. Uh, so it's, so it's feedback, yeah, so it's feedback mechanism. So that's that's I, kind of like the. I wasn't asking that question directly, but it was in it was in my mind. And where whereas I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you, I I I wasn't going to take anything to the level of. So, I'm trying to be a true AI, I guess, because no, I like know. not not a true AI, but like if you think about it, you're uh, if you put like a typical machine learning receptor with the capacity to um, both interpret the um, feedback from all the different sensory things that it would have um, in terms of receptors, right? And then. Um, you know, like feed all that back and into some sort of uh, mechanism to control a dashboard, right? Which in turn changes the sensor, the configurations of the sensory receptors, which in turn feed back into the dashboard. And so if you create that loop uh, with, with some machine learning, you basically are starting to play around with something really, really interesting. Okay. Okay. Anyway, but I, like, <laughs> no, I start to see what you're driving towards there, and this is no, this is perfect. This is the conversation I think I wanted to have for two oh, months okay. now. <laughs> um, uh, and that makes sense. And I'm not glossing over. I I want you to know I really appreciate <laughs> the the how much of the background has gone in because I've I, I witnessed some of that work and I've done some of you know internally. I, I've gone through that journey with mm -hmm. yeah how far back do you go and how do you start to define all these things although i had stopped short i was basically always trying to get the group together to have the discussions to say i shouldn't be doing this myself you know coming up with things like the embassy great but you like these coming up with these levels or the different ways we're going to deal with the information and 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 kind of start to bring that coherence i yeah, sort of had flashes of how i see it coming together um but I mostly want to answer with other people is that it's always a, you know, like a wall um, yeah, to, to find not only the, it, it's that, that's, that's the, the whole coherence thing. It's not just a matter of, you know, some values in a small program. It's, it's a matter no, of, no. It's a matter of uh, getting like roused up really. And <laughs> I agree. I agree. So, and you know, and then lacking to find as I think you all have found, you know, so there's, how many have people have I talked to seriously about this? I mean, you know, like half a dozen maybe, and mm -hmm. and you know, the you know, two or three of the rest of them. So like, <laughs> you know, yeah. I guess this is the pod where we're starting to really take this seriously, and it's just, um, yeah. Now I'm I'm I, you know I'm playing catch up and uh, to, yeah. to 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 all this work. So I and in my mind, 
you know, how open-ended do you make it? In other words, I guess there's a decision point for, you know, my internal processing as, you know, whatever, whatever I want to do with my life and, and what I envision the project being is, can I mesh that with, you know, what's, what's here or not, you know what I mean? And I don't mean that, you know, I, I'm not, there's no judgment there. It's just like, okay, so are we talking about the same thing? Are these projects meshable? How could I do, do I need to do, you know, development along the same lines or. So Brian yeah. mentioned something that could potentially help with that, but it's kind of like a tr trust factor as well. Um, well sure. There's a uh, the, the, trust the, factor to move forward on. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that's, that's true. But uh, I mean, this is a bit more involved in the sense that, one sec, in the sense that, um, the uh, the the structure of it, the the maybe not the look and feel, obviously, but the very uh, con concept of what you're seeing on the screen right now, for instance, yeah. is coming from more of a mental space, not necessarily a compute computational one. And so, Understood. and yeah. so um, there's that verifiability uh, that can go on for yourself, where if 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 I uh, if you start perceptively seeing things in the same way, then you can actually verify that it's working or not, right? Um, if that doesn't work for you, you can say, oh, okay, this is bullshit. I want to do it this way. Um, right, so right. What, what we're doing is we're making us not, not, we're not only making a strong case that this is the way it should be. We're also okay. put We're also, um, sort of like eating our own dog food in this case where <laughs> yeah that's a we're, sorry i just i came across that phrase <laughs> did cory tv say something about it? anyway I don't know about Corey, I, but it's, I, it's, a, it's a developer it is it is and i don't um i had i just you know one of those synchronicity things i had just kind of i I had heard that phrase before, but I'd never really looked up the history and stuff and, or, you know, and then, and then I remembered, I looked it up and probably about a month ago I, or something, I looked it up and then I remembered, like, I think I remember the original commercial. I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's right. Um, but anyway, yeah. uh, yeah. And I, obviously that's going to be important for, for any of us that are doing this, right? Like we all have, projects that we actually want to use this technology for and the intent is to start using it as soon as we can for the actual you know purpose yeah. that that we're intending it for I, I i think i'm allowing myself a little more slop room in the middle of instead of getting bogged down in some of the bootstraps i've just decided to go ahead and say okay well let's use interim technology that everybody's used to in the meantime while we mm -hmm. start to figure out what the with the true collaboration software it looks like so I know, I that's where telegram came in yeah and that's where telegram came in. so and yeah so so where telegram's strong i guess is obviously someone else has developed all the platform independent stuff to where you know you don't have to worry about all those abstractions to to mm -hmm. apps and 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 you know android and iphone and all that stuff right yeah um which is nice you know you see more traditional um collaboration features there where you're combining sort of the idea of, of different rooms yeah with, yeah with membership in those rooms and then there are attachments tied yeah. to those rooms as well so the problem um, i have with all of that is when what in 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 um in, in the physical world like out here works like that like there are no the, all channels are like uh, are makeshift right okay essentially all communication channels like you, you're not going to be able to talk to somebody you're not an earshot of you're right not, you're not, or without a device, of course. Um, so, and even with a device, you open that channel, you close that channel, right? So, it's really why this is really why there is such a emphasis on this whole conversation bit because they they end, right? That's that's the premise of a conversation is that it ends. Interesting, interesting. Um, so an ended conversation is fi is finished. You can always start a new one. You can same. You can start five conversations with the same person. They can all be you. You know. <laughs> so that's so that's where in the embassy there's going to be 
all this chatter going on if you're not in a conversation but when you go into a conversation the chatter goes away i'm just yeah. trying to restate i think what i heard yesterday to verify. yeah it, get, it gets more uh condensed into uh into what the people are interested in and this is there's two levels to that um the, the reason it's being seen is so that people that are uh so reading a coherent conversation between members can actually you know um gain something from it uh without necessarily interrupting them because uh, it's it's always so much fun when you have a room of 100 people and you know you um you're talking ah. to somebody who's asking questions and you're trying to uh and you're trying to delineate a few uh, a, a, a few premises so that you know you can connect them all together later and then somebody comes in looking at corn bob <laughs> Who starts, to, <laughs> who starts to just uh, talk about complete nonsensical things with the relation to what you're saying and the other person not knowledgeable enough in discerning, you know, like what's real information and what isn't. Lincoln. Right. Sorry. I'm back, by the way. If you hey, Brent. See. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, um, so yeah we, we've, we've, uh, he's just, been catching me up. <laughs> So they would start this uh, this information that has um, that might even sound factual but isn't right. And you're trying to talk to this person, and that this happens. And now you have to not only explain what you're saying, you have to explain what the other person is saying incorrectly and why it's incorrect and why you know like. And then it puts you up in this another different social circumstances like pitted against each other all of these kinds of things are absolutely unnecessary for actual discussion right so agree agree conversation it does it it delineates who's participating in it and it's still open for it's it's still happening in this big lobby kind of space so people can hear it's kind of deal um, but what well, you would have that decision at some point, right? Like, could yeah. you, you could make the decision to say, this is, this is going to be a private conversation from here on out. And it, this wouldn't be available to people um, in the embassy. I'm actually not inclined to, to, um, to cater to that too much. I mean, sure. We could potentially have it, but then it doesn't feed back into the system. And so, um, so what I, I guess what I'm thinking, uh, so if you had, so you have working group, well, you're going to have to have some layer of access, right? You're going to have people that are, are working with, with higher level projects that are, you know, could be discussed at an embassy level, but you're really going to end up doing something with them in the field research lab. So how, where do you keep the discussion of the development in the field research lab, which probably is not going to be open to necessarily the public? The so, end. okay. So this is where you get into uh, more contextualized dashboards, right? Like you don't, so this dashboard is going to be in anybody who's, ever, who's anybody who's connected to this whole central system, but from it springs like the personal, and the uh, collective ones called the, uh, um, they're basically what we call proximity guilds. Okay. And, and every proximity guild is self-isolated in that sense. So they still have access to what they're connected to as well, but they can always go contextualize themselves there. So anybody who's a member of a particular proximity guild, which by the way has the same feature as a the conversation, they begin and they end. Um, but the point there is, um, is that um, yeah? There's the isolate. The isolation can happen on that on, on that front. So you're not necessarily pouring everything into every lobby. You're pouring it, depending on which dashboard you're on. You're pouring it into that guild's um, into the lot. So it's the embassy of the guild. So in other words, you have all the context that you have on your screen here right now in terms of the two level and i i guess forgive me what are we referencing with immunity and nutrition what would you call um, those so these the concept are, of those things so these are what we call the natural guilds okay and so the, those are the natural guilds but then how there's two levels and or? these are the these are the areas of concern of a particular guild so the particular okay, okay. particular areas of concern of the education guild 
is include education yeah. <laughs> is all of the natural guilds so it's kind of repeats here is a repeat okay, Genia, just a quick question on your screen does that pull down menu go behind the text like i can't see what no I it doesn't education immunity environment and the rest yeah, i can't see i agree it's weird the oh. way it rep represents on our screen <laughs> but no i don't have that issue Okay, so that's that's some sort of yeah. I didn't know that it was happening to you guys. Transitional Zoom problem. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. something. That's the, very interesting. So when you switch to immunity, you get different areas of concern. Okay. And so on and so forth. So inner and outer environments, um, and then so on and so forth, which I don't have filled in, so it doesn't matter. Are we gonna fill those in? Well, yeah, but I'm not necessarily <laughs> testing my data entry capabilities. Why, why isn't it done yet, Zenia? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Been waiting. Um, okay, so this is very okay. This is this is filling in a lot of blanks for me, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, in order to participate in the system, you you have to adopt the guild system. You have to adopt the guild system of overarching organization. That's the, that's the um, that's that's the call to action. Yes. Okay. And it's not a it's not a simple one. I, I'm fully aware that this is like an an insane call to action. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I don't I don't think it's insane at all. I just I'm trying to figure out. I'm always trying to figure out what the highest level of extrapolation is on this sort of thing, right? So, and and I, you all did too. I think you went all the way up and the answer you've come up with is, look, to even start out with this, you need to agree on these, these this type of natural guilt system because we believe this is the best representation of what is naturally occurring in the world anyway. And we're, we're trying to, to start to define that for use in this information coherence software, yes? Yeah, now try to put that into an actual sales pitch. Yeah, I, yeah. It, well, and it's hard. Be, well, because it's you, you're it's it's the bootstrap problem because you're playing the glass glass bead game to describe the glass bead game. Yeah, you know, or or what what have you? You're you're yeah. No, it's, it's it's a valid it's a valid analogy. It's basically. Do so you hate the problem? Here, here's the, here's the solution, and that's the, that's the sales pitch. Do you hate the problem? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the solution <laughs> I, which I you know I think that's a good I think that's a good pitch I yeah the still I'm still processing a lot of that but okay that that gives me we're, we're I, still I processing after a few years so yeah I have a comment about about that where I think you're kind of going with with the thoughts there um, <clears throat> a couple things one is that this whole uh, software suite or whatever to be used in its full capacity we don't expect even a small portion of the population ever to to want even to want to do that um, but the uh, leaders organization organizers um, people who have kind of awakened to this uh, complexities of of uh, communication and and organization of of um, of themselves and and the people around them uh, they will definitely be interested and also the way that this uh, software is set up the way that the dashboard is set up um, it it should be for most people they may only want to get into like say embassy and, and bonfire they may not even ever be concerned with tagging stuff um, as far as functionality um, as far as pulling together narratives into protocols and stuff like that, but they will definitely benefit from it that when they see they have it, they're doing a task, they will have links that, that may pop up that say, okay, well, here's a bunch of protocols of how to take care of that. Here's the, the instructions of how to do that. If you want to use them as bootstrapping material for your process, right? So different, different people may want to get in at different well, levels. Well, and see, this is, yeah, we call this this concept. Uh, we call it an artifact. You can hopefully pick up on coherent ones. And I, I think this is so. Now we're this is getting to the heart of I think the difference in in visualization, right? It, it, it I think what I've always what I've been envisioning for a little bit now is you know the need to be able to plunk something down and say, look, this is this is how we're going to do this, and and 
yeah, and let me define <laughs> what it is we're going to do, right? It Because, it, yeah, sorry, I'm deciding how far to go back. Um, so if you're going to try and basically organize organize a community, right? And And I think when I say community in this case, I think what I mean is proximity guild, okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. So if you're going to organize a proximity guild and organize, and this is where I think the AO really is, is very intriguing to me, is, is um, the abstract organization of cards into missions and the people that are tagging on those cards participating in that mission. Mm -hmm. Then I think they're, what the AO is m missing in my viewpoint is something more like this which is conversations and then how you then would pull the most important things out of the conversations to put into the missions um and and, and we're all you know we keep meshing right. words here because in my mind i would just say something like <clears throat> you'd like you're going to have a community and you're going to have projects within that community and you're going to have different people that are participating in those projects. So um, you're to, going to have to give you an idea. Experts. Sorry, just yeah. not, not to cut no, you go off, ahead, but go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, it's perfectly fine to just uh, use the language you're most comfortable with. We're kind of uh, in the habit of just translating it into our own little speak anyway. Um, but this is a good exercise for us too to retranslate re it all back um, in terms of you, you yourself uh, are comfortable with. So perfectly fine to just say it the way you were, you want. <laughs> but, so it, it, it's interesting because this is what happens when uh, there's a separate level of coherence here where I, I'm constantly trying to adapt my my speak into someone else's because to me that's the most efficient form of communication. Like, well, yeah, it's it's a diff it's definitely a valid. Um, I would say it's a valuable thing to do with this with our model, but then again, I'm just uh, tooting my own horn with that, right? And <laughs> <laughs> and the model you all developed is is certainly, and I, I appreciate the complexity of it. It's very all inclusive. Like it, it yeah. We're we're trying to mo you're trying to model all social interaction. Um, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the uh, uh, abstracting up to that to that layer. Um, yeah, part of it is from the fact that English is essentially piss poor in terms of um, relaying the concepts that we're trying to address. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I just wanted um, to get into please, something please. quickly. Um, just something no, that came, came to mind. Um, the so with with regard to kind of like how do you get people to use the system and that kind of stuff um when if you're if you are um let's say you're a, a community facilitator and you pop into a proximity guild for um uh a, for a community gardening or something like that and then so you have this bunch of people say there's like 10 20 people all working in the same space the same garden and they're having yes. different differing ideas about what to plant, why to plant it, when to plant it, and all this ah, kind of stuff. And it's just kind of meshing. To the heart of it. It's just kind of okay. meshing together what actually ends up happening. And so what we want to do is is introduce a way of of visualizing and representing these different ideas. And then through feedback observation of of actually what's happening as as kind of a scientific experiment. Um, you end up kind of floating the best protocols up to the top. <clears throat> and then, so this is why you would want to How do you to determine catch, best? Um, well, whichever ones get tried, if they work out, then that's kind of like a positive. If, if, if So, but then you have to have a measure, you have to have a metric to drive that sort of categorization. So you need, you yeah. would need smart, essentially some sort of measurable goals or measurable things related to the right, project right. and and then, <clears throat> You know, it, it, so then if we're talking food production, you know, like what what is the measurement? Are we talking whatever calories per something? So this, this <laughs> calories per square foot. This is the idea of coherence and why it's um, a thing yeah. in the first place. Yeah, there's going to be so many factors, um, but essentially we are looking for isomorphic food. We are looking for food that that does the best job of being most compatible with 
everything around it just that item of food so and what that is so even that itself our metrics what we're going to use for metrics that in itself would also be have to be an ongoing feedback process um so you Agreed. can't just say we want the most tons of food like that's, right. that's kind of like profit no type. we you have know, to talk about yeah nutrition and all that right um yeah so you have a community facilitator come in and and like just start absorbing like a sponge all of the the practices that are ongoing and a person like that could try to reflect back to the community like that and 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 show them like well they tried saying this or they tried this and and just it's kind of a process but um not not everybody has to be taking the active role of actually interfacing with with the system and trying to make uh, isomorphic artifacts like uh, like a proper protocol or or like identifying yeah like not everybody's a mod but and you see this already happening right i mean it just obviously i mean we all know it's already happening i, I should stop saying that but if you look in reddit for example which is just where i tend to spend most of my social media time so ouch <laughs> what can i say i'm glutton for punishment um there's a lot of information to try to cohere there um Yep, <laughs> and that's just naturally where some of that activity Sorry, started. Sorry, that out. just that just rolled off of the tongue right there. No, that that see, this is perfectly fine though, and it's part of the reason why. Yeah, do I? Why I don't know that be between spending most of most social media time more in Reddit, um, and then spending real work time in a corporate environment with all the usual corporate collaboration tools and trying to drive those projects and meetings and um, and it's it's not good it microsoft is oh not God. good at this right so they thought they were and it, it was when it was more simple when people were reliably in the same place and all you had to do was literally present a virtual calendar like here's the room you're going to and here's who's going that was simple right now everyone's in different spaces we're dealing with a lot of overlapping efforts you're trying to the 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 drive for for productivity is 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 what's driving it all but it's also just trying to sell stuff and it's also just microsoft has a market share so they can do whatever they want and you're gonna have to use it if you're a corp if your company uses microsoft and you don't have any choice right and well you're way, speaking to developers that have abandoned microsoft so <laughs> oh, oh and i i totally agree i don't want I, i'm not in favor of the way microsoft has developed teams for example right and i don't and i think but what i'm trying to say is like i'm also trying to solve the team's problem the, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. I, I, it, it's that same we, we know there's a working group we can define the working group we don't have to get too abstract about it because there's larger um it physical real world type of organizations that are guiding some things right like who's participating um that it doesn't have to be entirely fielded virtually that there's already basically an existing organizational structure that we're applying this software yeah. to or that is going to use this software and, yeah, absolutely. and it needs to work on both levels it can work right. on this very high abstract level that you all are talking about or mm -hmm. it should be customizable by an individual enterprise or proximity guild well, or community well, or dude, whatever this, this this thing right that i'm highlighting right now yeah right that could be on a piece of paper agreed right so this whole um this whole interface like it's enough to have it like mentally a part of it even mentally embedded and and you're already halfway um there to what to, to what we're trying to do oh. right so like the the the, the kind of um, adoption we're looking at isn't necessarily even in the software level it's more of a software is just another tool in the same in the same trajectory right but the core of it is like what we do here right the core it's not this sorry um, the core is stuff like this um, like this stuff right <laughs> yeah yeah right? so so these two things are connected and this is life. This isn't computing. This isn't uh, any of that. So this just kind of helps with, with, with putting it all into um, perspective with uh, 
with, with how to do that. So like this would be your meditation app essentially in this case, um, right? With people that can help. Um, that's just what the purpose of it is. But all of all of what it does, it's 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 just trying to copy what your mind's already doing, right? Which is all the stuff that, mm -hmm. right. that everybody the whole thing is extensible as far as like um, protocols are completely customizable um, we're just we're kind of just map, giving tools to to map things out and to express things in a in a way that's coherent uh, with mm -hmm. with experience itself and um, this is the, the full-blown interface uh, to everything right like this is like my quote-unquote grandmaster interface who knows what um, what what different subsystems could end up using mm -hmm. different looking and, dashboards yeah just because they're tackling a smaller subset of the yeah. issues like we were we were envisioning uh last year dashboards for like the the drivers guild like uber drivers and that kind of stuff and just what mm -hmm. that would look like and like yeah clearly this would, be, this would be over can you imagine using this to order an uber oh my god <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and both on the the client and the um, and the the service provider, so using the same dashboard, you would have like maps and stuff like that, and and uh, and web of trust interfaces, so you can see like how many loot hops of trust yeah. are you away from a particular driver, and how far away are they? That kind so of this stuff. so this you would basically be just focusing on something like. You, you'll have over here, everything's taken care of automatically for this part. You'll have over here, you'll have the um, order my Uber functionality. And over here, you'll have your map. Where's where's my Uber showing up? That's, mm -hmm. I already see it. Yeah, you just don't, you, you this would be like chat to your driver, chat with your driver. <laughs> yeah, and this, so any and, company could and this, this. And this would be rate, rate my driver. Any company can take the framework and and make their own dashboard, how, customize however they want. Yeah, it's very loose. Like, uh, again, the terms stem from the fact that we are, we have our own bootstrap to work through. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as far as that goes, like you just picture a different word here, different word here, different word here, different word here. This, sure, it's a chat interface right now, um, but you pick a different context and it could be just video conferencing. I don't know. So, but then your contacts, your your guilds wouldn't, do you still need guilds if it's that specialized or do you just need the embassy levels or are you all internal guilds, but more subjects or something at that? Yeah, you, what you'll have is you'll have essentially imp implicit uh, guild dynamics going on because that's a layer that's just underlies everything, kind of like how Scepter underlies um the, you know, the receptor network right it's just you can't you can't un untie the two concepts okay but um what you can do is you don't have to exp uh, you don't have to be explicit in its expression like you can do something simpler um to make utility of it i mean so so perhaps you know some level the the guild instead of immunity something's going to be assumed some sort of guild might be assumed up there and maybe that doesn't even show up and then you just have you all you see are the uh, the areas of concern within that guild because it's already you're already in a particular you know the, the interface that you're the dashboard you're using is already assumed mm -hmm. you know you're you're already at the level of a particular I guess guild in this case or community or company, right? Yeah, yeah. And that of course gives me a great idea as to how to break all of this apart into its more flexible interface. <laughs> there you go. See, and that's the other thing. I mean, that's the other reason I want to participate in this is because I think I, I would hope that by maybe trying to understand this and ask questions, I I can. Yeah, yeah. You're definitely driving development right now for sure. Okay. Feedback okay. is the name of this game for me. <laughs> Literally. So I think. I, I, that that clears up a great a great deal for me. Then I'm still trying to get through the exactly how we apply protocols in the field research lab to affect the lower levels, like how that feedback like literally looks so, in uh, in a data model. But what I what I want to do initially is uh, have some things that represent events, and, um, some things that represent conditions, and some things that represent actions. Um, these are of course cards and 
it's obviously we're going to need to get some building blocks uh, to get the bull rolling here. But um, but this that you're talking about types at that point actions would be a, a type or a type of card. Yeah. Okay. So so we do have a card type, and this is one of the things that I did feel was missing, or that yeah, maybe I is, missed in this the is AO. All, yeah, this is all here. Um, this is, I think, all Brian's invention, isn't it? So, so where are the schemas defined then, Brian? It's another card. Okay. Yeah. It's just it's just another card. It's the schema yeah. schema. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like. But that that like, that grand master cards that are immutable yeah. at some point. Yeah, schema schema, or like, maybe not. They're not. It, no, it's not that the grandmaster cards are immutable. It's that they. It's they're just they're the top beyond, level of cards. They're, they're, they're assumed to be coherent. Yes, they'll be. They'll be that's constantly. Good, uh, they're not subject subjected to. Yeah, they're not subjected to the calculation. They're just, but if you add a schema, if you add a new schema to be yeah. available for the schema, that has to go in the schema schema card. And, and, and then and then that will be another option for schemas on future cards or whatever. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like, so yeah, so when obviously like any programming language or like anything like to that of this nature, you'll have like basic building blocks from where to start to represent the system itself. And then you go from there. Does it make more sense to use an object oriented type of, of, of nested reference for some of these things as opposed to hashtags would be one of my questions. Uh, this words, is this is just me jotting down what Brian was saying at the time. Um, understood, understood. Um, yes. That would, that, I'm just voicing a question that pops up and I, so I tend to sound more authoritative than I mean. <laughs> no, 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 it's perfect. It's perfectly fine. It's just a way for me to annotate it. So I, so I have the different uh, view. So anything you see with a hashtag here represents an actual card that in, in existence. Do you and think so there's a possibility for like model dot submodel, um, or you know what I mean, like namespace and stuff? Yeah, in order to so I mean so schema is the top of schema, and then you know you have a schema dot model and a schema dot model dot well, submodel that can extrapolate, well, for example. For one, I. Think that these kinds of things are they're they're too unique to per dashboard. They're not. They shouldn't uh, bleed out without without something explicitly without explicitly being imported and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's one level of namespacing that happens uh, in my head. None of this is actually happening, by the way. Um, oh, I know, I know. That's why we're trying to gain coherence with uh, with the information in our heads. Like, yeah, you know, I'm so not. We, so we can actually against, develop it. <laughs> I'm not against uh, figuring out some sort of like a namespacing mechanism. We'll, it's just going to be a namespace card, and we'll go from there. So, because then I'm also seeing. So you know, and I, I'm going to start to actually take some notes at this point. Um, uh, why am, why am I not typing? Uh, um, yeah, that we okay card yeah uh, that we I what I'm seeing here is a card attribute of a of a, a title a schema and um and it's type. Mm -hmm. And then, but then there's also the reference of potential hashtags. In other words, something like a subject matter, right? And then, yeah, coming from here, do we already? But then we also have the guild reference at the top. So, is how do what is the bridge between the card and 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 the guild and areas of concern? So this is contextualized as coherent, according to this category. So okay. in the context that, of that category, this is this it's coherent is calculated. That data is part of that card or is there's a separate table it's or a separate of, construct it's, that it's, relates it's a, it's a part of the conversation from which it emerged. Okay. Conversations, okay, that's so we're taking messages are within or cards are within a conversation. So messages typically uh, will be inside of the conversations for the uh, filtering effect, right? And to give it a subject matter as well, 
right? Because like right now we were just saying uh, conversations between these people, uh, but you can name it, right? We will, there, it's gonna happen eventually. So that, that gives us like a taggable object. What, what are the other tags on the card? So, uh, so these and, would be all other cards or and or other referenceable objects. So this is where this diagram is actually becoming more relevant. Um, and this stems from this conversation, from last night's conversation. We have this um, God object, if you will, uh, which is everything that's referenceable in the system. And everything else is an extension of it. Uh, it's, uh, so it's everything is just referenceable. Yeah. Yeah, and all the details, the details will sit in the different tables and everything, but uh, that's going to be hidden away. Ah, uh, okay. Now we're really getting at the heart of this. Okay, so what, oof, what, what is the literal construct that holds that reference? I mean, we're just talking about a giant table of nothing but ID and type? Yep. That's it. That's all it has and a method to access its... Um, uh, details. So method to access the details. Okay. Yeah, it's a polymorphic method, so it can return an object of, say, human detail or pro basic profile detail. How it do can, we know? How do you know the attributes of what it's going to return? So every time uh, you uh, extract the object, so you just go down this hierarchy right here. So the referenceable you'll get is in the shape of a human. So you're actually going to get class human, not uh, class referenceable so it's already going to know that it has details of human it's already going to know that um, uh, basic profiles are attached to it so like you're going to you get referenceable you call the method to get the details of the referenceable no 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 the, the referenceable is already going to do that for you internally i just haven't filled in all the attributes here um, so all the methods you're seeing here and the details down here are going to be available here. How do you know? How do you know what what's available? What is the schema that references that you can call email on human? So this so this type attribute here determines the class here. Okay. And human extends the referenceable. So what you got is a human class, right? And this human class has its own attributes outside of what's referenceable has. One of them is to the details of the of here. One of them is to the basic profiles over here. I just haven't filled it all out yet. Um, no, un understood on not having filled it out. I'm and just, I'm still, and, and this so for me may be a gap in programming knowledge or in, yeah, you know, this, I've just never seen anything quite <laughs> represented well, this these, way. So. Well, this, these are classes, right? So each class can have unique attributes uh, outside right. of what, it, what it's uh, inheriting. So there's an inheritance relationship. And then this thing is also going to have its own attributes, which point to this, which point to right. that. And so every time, getting, you, every time you, yeah, you extract the referenceable, all of this happens automatically and you're already at the level of human and you're already at the level of basic profile. Okay. Right. I, I'm trying to, I'm just getting over my own bootstrap problem here, which is that, you know, obviously most programming assumes that, you know, a programmer is sitting there and, and is determining in the program flow, you know, what class we're using and already knows as, you know, through the human's knowledge and because they're programming the rest of it, what, the attributes are and how they're going to use it and mm -hmm. essentially they're going to like physically like if i have a question about what is included in a class while i'm writing a program i'll just go look at the class definition and, and yeah. okay yeah this is what it is but now we're trying to abstract that and we're saying yeah so we have you're a lot of these... return something and you don't necessarily know even what that class is so i need a way to tell you what the class is well, there's i need my... a way to tell the program what the class is right there, there there's a there's a what do you call it? There's a reason to the madness. So if you'll notice, there's <laughs> always there's always a uh, correlationship in the naming, De password, password detail, email, email detail. So okay, so that is the basic building block of what we're starting to assume. Yeah. So the, all okay, these, all okay, these that's things, what I'm looking for. Okay. You're just gonna go to the detail table to give you the definitive, um, the definitive uh, profile of what each one of these will bring to the table. But a lot of these methods are just going to be ported 
ported across so that it's a simpler interface uh, to deal with. The how, how much of this starts out this way and how many tables are you creating during the course of, of definition? So, like what is the most, what, <laughs> and this goes back to the master card sort of thing, right? Like what is the most basic things that we're assuming before we clear, can clearly we're Clearly we're assuming a human, we're assuming, and we're assuming a human holds a basic profile which has uh, password credentials attached to it. Okay. So that as far that goes, uh, I think that's as far as the minimum. Well, of course, we're assuming there's such things as conversations. We're also assuming details like that exist for the sake of credentials themselves, and we're also okay. going to assume that messages exist to be put into these conversations. So these I are can... like the internal stuff that's going to be. Uh, that's probably not going to be um, programmable externally. Okay, okay. And is is this the same? Because uh, obviously, I, yeah, is this the same construct an AO uses, or is this I don't think unique so. to? Okay. I don't think so. I didn't reference anybody. Um, the other thing I can probably say here is that this agents thing is going to be expanded a little bit more to represent different connect uh, ways that dashboards connect to each other. Okay. Uh, so you could connect your personal program with another one and you have a profile a representation somewhere. What do you, you're programming in Python? Was that no, right? This or? is Rails. Rails, is Ru oh, Ruby. Okay, yeah. Ruby on Rails? Yep. <laughs> okay, and that's, I need to get, I need to get more from, a, oh, yeah, no problem. Um, that's where I need to catch up then. I have not done Ruby. Um, I don't program at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's okay though. But yeah, if I'm going to be, <laughs> I do. So, right. Uh, and I'm, I'm very interested in, in getting in on this. So I need to catch myself up on Ruby on Rails, which mm. I also, just from what I already know about it, am more probably going to be more comfortable with than the JavaScript stuff. Um, I don't, I didn't. Per I don't personally. The more I thought about it, the more I kind of have an issue with programming on top of the JavaScript engines. I. I don't, I don't know. I, I. I have a real. I, I. We haven't even talked about you know obviously platforms or whatever. But I. 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 It, everything has to be available open source in some way, which I think Ruby on Rails is. Is that open source or is that? As far as I know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That would be that would be the goal. Um, I just you know obviously I don't want to build anything off of anything that could possibly be right. jeopardized by ownership. Um, <laughs> be, so mm -hmm. if that makes sense, and I, I guess I would assume you would have the same feeling around that stuff. Yeah. Um, being anti Microsoft. And whatnot. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really about the the ability to to replicate on a peer to peer basis the whole stack. Like the whole, right, the whole agreed, thing. and and at least and be able to point to those external resources. So whether it's like you know you, you know we we prefer an Arch Linux build or a I don't know pick you know pick any flavor you you mm -hmm. want to you know make your primary qualifying engine you know to say okay where well, this is what we recommend we build off of. Um, yeah, I'm back, by the way, sorry. No, that's fine. Do you um what do you run for an OS? Do you run our uh, I guess Ubuntu, Arch Linux, uh, something else that I don't know about. I'm looking um, at the moment I got my work computer at home, so this is okay. uh, that's on mint. But um the way I have it set up is on Docker, if you're familiar with that. Okay. I'm not, but I will that's why I'm asking. So I wanna yeah. take notes and get more familiar. So yeah, if, Docker if Doc, Docker works pretty much pretty well on any Linux distribution. Similarly, um, you probably have to toy around more with Macs and definitely with Windows. Okay, so they were talking, you know, development platform, um, uh, Ruby on Rails, uh, Rails and uh, Docker. Okay. Uh, if you yeah, what Linux distro are you using? If you don't mind my asking, if you don't want to share, it's fine Mint, too. But Mint, it's Mint. Mint. Okay. I don't mind. That's no, fine. I don't know. I just I I, I don't know who is squarely about what information, so <laughs> it's, it's fine yeah. with me. I don't know. No, this is. Yeah, I think I think we should share about that stuff. But okay. Um, 
Yeah, I was. I, I haven't it made should any. run on anything, but it yeah. should. I agree. I, I, I what Scepter, I, I use a, the goal. <laughs> well, my, well, I my, use a might have Chromebook use for. I just use a Chromebook with Christine for like just sort of everyday life stuff, and then I have a older, slightly older but functional development machine that I was running Ubuntu on right now, but. That slowed down a little bit since I made some configuration changes and I'm thinking about going to something more streamlined, um, like an Arch Linux or something. But this is why I prefer Mint. These Mint. Days. So I'll, I'll take a look at Mint as well because I uh, I never got into that one. Same okay. repositories, but uh, leaner um, execution. Okay, that's and that's really what I'm interested in. All right, thank you. I'll look into Mint because that's what I think. Um. Yeah, I can really get behind that structure. That was ex exactly the kind of <laughs> that's what I needed to get into in order to yeah, soothe my own. It's not, a, it's, it's, not <laughs> it's not even easy to follow though. Like you can see, it's loop, looping around quite a bit, and usually no, but that's fine. I like I I understand now that with that explanation a little with the explanation of the referenceable and the the method and the calling and the, and the detail tables, yeah. that's what pulled it together for me. Like I, when I was looking at this, I didn't quite make that click um yeah so yeah. the database tables are actually going to be slightly simpler than what you're seeing here this is the object diagram like so these are the classes um right that, okay that we have, not the uh this is not, so the, not tables, the tables yeah so okay. the tables that we're going to have is just this um and all of the details um everything else is going to sit in referenceable okay yeah, except, so for the is, except for the credentials, because you don't want your credentials to be referenceable. That's stupid. no, no. <laughs> agreed, agreed. So, so, so you're going to have these. Um, a, a, so you have a conversation. Okay. So what is the the referenceable for? This is all profile stuff or whatever. But then when we talk about what's actually on a card, that's what we're trying to find now. So it's not in your diagram so, yeah. yet right yeah there's going to be messages here message details. messages okay so i think it's that a well, probably is it a message that. is it a card is it do we make the cards so here's where we yeah. start to talk about hey what's a good term for and this is how we come up with all these wonderful uh <laughs> language okay. that, that you're seeing so perfect do we want to i mean yeah i'm not trying to push <laughs> no, no, no. I, I really, but then, yeah, that's what I'd be really interested in in trying to figure out. Then is okay. I use this. any reference I can. I can find. Like I'm not. I'm not at all picky. So is it? Are we talking about all these? What is the atom of of information then mm -hmm. in terms of extrapolating? You know, obviously we have human. We have all the the agent human details and and profile all that. Mm -hmm. But then yeah. when we get to the actual data, which is more, probably much more of where so data is going to be. So data sounds like a, an excellent name to me. Yeah. Um, and it's something we should be, well, we have to figure out what keywords are for, I, I'm not familiar enough with. Check it out. You just, you you, you've just made a decision in the uh, system. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, look out. Okay. And I, I think that's the heart of it, right? That would be anything. That could be a message. It could be an email. It could. It's just, well, those yeah. are the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it. Yep, I'm just wondering, like, um, the difference between a, a message and a card. Like, if there is, if there is a difference, I'm. Kind oh yeah. Of, I'm kind of leaning towards a card being actually isomorphic. An isomorphic unit. As, as in something that's either one of the either um, like a protocol, a constraint, um, this kind of stuff, a commitment. That's what I would think to be like what a card would be. Is a card just a specific type of datum? It would. Yeah. It would be. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm showing you guys how it's done. <laughs> right. There we go. <laughs> we have three slightly different views that are driving information coherence. So here you go. Duplicate that message. There we 
there. Almost there. Making sense? Yeah. We've just split our uh, referenceable into interesting pieces. So, so now do cards reference messages and how messy does that get? Because our, if, if, if a message is what takes place in the embassy or right. And then as part of a conversation mm -hmm. and then, so a card and then you want to pull a, that up to a card. Yeah. What, what these will have is the, they will have different internal structures to them. Um, by uh, implementing one of these detailed tables. So that will drive what, so a message is probably just like a lot of raw content, right? Like a free flow kind of a deal. A card, right. a card has like more slotted <clears throat> information pieces like what's the, an ID for that, an ID for that, an ID for this. It has a title. Yeah, like. A type. Right, which are, which could be like typed in or referenced or I don't, I'm not sure yet, but. Wouldn't a card also be a type of message, though? Or, like, are all cards messages? Um, well, not we, necessarily, right? Could you, could you could fill out a card independent of a message, perhaps? I don't know. It, it, it could be can... broadcast. Yeah, it could, should be broadcast. I don't, it could be a, a message created through a card. I don't mind that. Because uh, all it will do is it'll dump it into the lobby, right? Or the conversation that you're in or something. Just what we were talking about yesterday, it seemed like everything has to filter through this conversation. Like yeah, yeah. Nothing is not. So even a new card should potentially be that. Yeah. So. But it doesn't. Might... But it doesn't. But once a card exists, it doesn't mean that it has to go through that title funnel in process again. For. Yeah. Before, like it's not going to be just a message anymore, um, because otherwise we're stuck in a loop. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Because it needs to get to that point where it, yeah you know, it, it, yeah this so this is the top down and bottom up thing again I guess so we need to make a distinction yeah so potentially messages could be card messages wow okay huh okay cool that yeah. that that opens up another can of worms of course <laughs> <laughs> so here we get Good. uh. Text. Let's just call the software the can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like let me, it. Let me just that, load up the can of worms right now. <laughs> that be, you know what? That's a great. I'm open the can of worms. That is a great know. code name. I, I saw that it's mediator a in a name. box game that I sent you, Brian, and I was like, <laughs> "That's an interesting. That's an interesting way to start a card game. Mediator in a box." Right. Yeah, that was cool. I looked into that a little bit. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know how good it was, or um, you know, obviously, it, I think it was a pretty targeted implementation. But uh, yeah, kind of cheesy and all that presentation. But it, it's neat to see all the different attempts at what we're doing in exactly. in so many like very niche ways. Like, there's nobody's kind of taking on all all of it at once. Yeah, except for <laughs> except for you guys. <laughs> I assume there's others. There has to be. I just well, don't know where they are. Uh, it could just now be there's, me. Now there's me. Well, let's see. There you go. <laughs> uh, okay. So there's message, uh, but you started to do a card message, and that's where I think I was. So the text message is. Oh, come on. I think I lost you guys there a little bit. What. Um, what is the difference between card and card message or does card reference card message? Uh, Jenny is going to have to explain that one, I think. <laughs> Give me guys a second, please. No, that's okay. That's all right. But it just seems like the fact that a, a message can also be a card. Like if you're sending a message, it can, it can be a card, something like that. I don't know. So here's what's happening. Um, whenever you create a card, a card message is created. So now you have both, uh, so, so there's, it's basically another it's okay. message wrapper that references this card is going to be created. Yes. Ah, but yes. so then that construct is somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, so we... back in, and fed back into the conversation. Right. So the card can become part of the conversation. Oh, bam. Okay. Okay. It doesn't go the other way around. Does the message become 
No. How do we get messages into so, cards? So, so or... when you create, so when you create a card, you can reference specific messages as your content, as as the bits and pieces that will fill out your different attributes. And it'll be referenced through the datum referenceable, essentially. Uh, yeah. Datum, 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 datum. Yeah, yeah. All the different datums are going to be. I forget. Well, I forget where I was going with the datum thing. So yeah, I know. I well, I started. No, I started that. So that's why I wanted to finish it. Was is, is that still useful, or are we really just saying that message and card are two different referenceables, and we don't need the datum structure anymore? So datum would probably just unify something. If we need that unification, we will. If we don't, then we don't. Right. It's the same. It's the same as having an agent here and a profile here. It's, it's okay. They're never. Okay. They haven't been used yet, but we don't know. I okay, and I agree with that. I think because I think it, at the very least, you and always you got these two here like that. You, you're always going to have. I think any datum is going to have an ID and text right and then it, it's 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 the higher level construct that will contextualize yeah the the and i wouldn't even say text but blob perhaps right i mean if we're talking yeah. literal yeah yeah so so the question of like whether it's necessary or not is still in the air but right now um it seems like a good way to collect things together into one i i, I think i would propose then that datum would have simply an id and and a blob that's basically what it. Uh, but, so so it has an ID and a type, and then the blob um, is here. <laughs> this is where the blob will be. The text message. Uh, okay, and this is uh, okay. This is where I'm still sorry. Yeah, I need so to remember that this is an object reference and not a database type of. Like I'm already extrapolating down to database level. And yeah, this is different. still just one table here, um, all yeah. of these objects. But there will be a detail for the text message that will contain the uh, references to any blobs, pictures, and okay. all of that stuff. Okay, okay. I, I, I yeah. I, this I'm detail is, this yeah, so the de this detail is going to contain um, this reference, basically. Uh, and yeah. Now that we have these cards, we can start. Uh, we can we can actually have like what the card details drive the system somehow. What do we repre? How do we represent the guild and um, area of concern? And do we call that <laughs> AOC area of concern? Yes. Is that too, lo so, is that so too loaded a term now? <laughs> you so these would be cards. Me, I made so a those, about that already. Yeah, these would be. <laughs> <laughs> Based on our conversation yesterday, this is going to be like the main structure out of which like these contexts are built. So this is like where you have all your categories. This is where- Do we need, do we need another, yeah, do we need something else to describe the, yeah, the, these, the constructs you're representing with the areas of concern, where are you representing Embassy, because I, I, I think you said it didn't do anything yet. You hadn't programmed the functionality for embassy yeah, versus look, bonfire, right? Cur it, currently, so, they're, currently, they're not part of like the schema because I, this is new. Um, but ideally, they'll, again, they're, they come from here. No, nope, that, that's fine. So that's where I'm trying to like, like push. I'm, 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 I always push things, so I apologize. Yes. So, so, so I'm like, okay, like, then where do we attach? So yeah, this is like the we driver. This is like the driver of everything. Like, so we got to get this card thing. So how do we define? Yeah, and that, that this gets down to exactly then how and where we're defining the the guilds. I mean, you, you've already defined the guilds in a meta space. Where are we literally in this mm -hmm. program? Yeah, programming in the guild and area concern structure, and then also the idea of yes, hierarchy the, relevance with the embassy so and bonfire each, and all yeah. those. So each one is going to end up being a card of some sort. I haven't, uh, this is like the toughest part right now to figure out. Well, how, let's, how let's, the let's get into it then. I mean, and, and it also, if we need like a five, 10 minute break to like, I don't know, literally stretch or. 
I think yeah. I always exhaust everyone before that happens. Oh, well, <laughs> well, well, welcome. We'll see. <laughs> it's a, the race is on, Zinnia. All right. <laughs> I also tend to exhaust everyone. But <laughs> nice. Yes. I also am a computer person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> but yeah. even among computer people, yeah. even among computer people, when we were talking about at work, what I was talking about the organization of the uh, the knowledge base structure. Um, wow, that was whew. we had some long conversations oh, around the, the what metadata would be attached to, you know. And so it, this is essentially it's this is the same conversation on a whole different level because we're talking about what metadata to attach to a piece of knowledge, yeah. essentially. In, in, I mean, that's one way to look at and, it. And, and, and this takes into account that it's not going to be perfect the first time around, right? It's, it's a matter no, of... No, no, it has to be iterative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's where it comes from. So and yeah, it would, um, I think it would be difficult to change, and that, that's where I'm getting so hung up on this. Like, I think it is difficult to change the, um, the actual guild system or areas of concern within a guild even um for that for that for this uh for one particular space right like um yeah. let's let's talk about another space uh that might be more um relevant what's what just happened sorry i, I just know. took over your desktop uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go see there was already a joke here <laughs> i like i like this off 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 concern <laughs> yeah i know i know it, it makes it you was, look at it Makes makes a shit post. Makes you <laughs> I know. All right, go go ahead, Jenya. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> no, uh, why? Why? Thank you. That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> All right, so I don't know how you get the people to care about areas of concern. Yeah, I know. Go. You you Same. nag them about it, basically. Um, <laughs> yeah, apparently it's our it's our job. Um, so another, like, l let's look at what what I dubbed as the fundamental dashboard, which is kind of like the, um, it, it, the, the 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 grandmaster of dashboards. So, which it's the one that uh, basically lists um, other dashboards, and um, yeah, it's yes, yes. it's um, structure basically is such that. All of this will list is going to have three entries, one called fundamental, one called mediation, one called network. Um, fundamental will just be the exact same scenario as education here. It's just going to list again the same things. And so changing context from fundamental into fundamental is going to look like nothing. Um, then we get into the second category, which uh, is the mediation, and it drops you right into this one, which is all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's how you would switch from dashboard to bad dashboard. And of course, the, uh, th the third one will be the whole network. So it's going to be all of these different conversation that, uh, or sorry, all the different profiles that, are connected to not profiles, the, all the different dashboards. Guilds. Yeah, all the different proximity guild dashboards. So anything that this could lead potentially into, like if you're doing immunity and you're doing nutrition and you go into this context, which doesn't have a button yet, but say you go into it and you switch into a different dashboard, which potentially has totally different categories here and whatnot. On that fundamental dashboard, it's going to be listed as one of the um, one of the profiles, I guess, as a dashboard, or some, or no, one of the subcategories here. You know so do I mean? you see? It's just it's just flattening it out. It's going to flatten everything. Do you see? Yeah, I guess with your map, are you envisioning that? Um. Do you, are you always coming back through the embassy to get to a different guild, for example? The embassy is there to man, ensure that whatever happens in the conversation or just here in general is referenceable. So the embassy, is the embassy the lobby? Is that equivalent? Yeah. Uh, okay. Embassy and lobby are similar. The difference being is that when uh, 
the difference being is that in the lobby, you're not necessarily participating, you're like a guest. And so your contribution is uh, effectively just queries <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, okay. in, in terms of feedback. So these concepts, these concepts of levels really apply primarily to permissions then. Yeah, yeah. So you, uh, doing this explicitly ensures that this is recorded for um, it's how still, it's still going <laughs> to be recorded in the lobby but uh, this makes it like a referenceable entity that you can later put into here put into here put into here if it's not recorded here it doesn't really apply to this or here okay or here. okay so it's a, it's, a, it's a conscious choice you're making but that's so that's within mm. Okay, so I you know I had a mistake in my thinking there. Or, uh, yeah, the kind of coherence in my thinking. Yeah, but if, so if, the, if the privacy the, is what you're looking for, is either the, here, either the lobby or the embassy still happens within the guild and area of concern. Yes, so look, uh, think of it as more of a subcategory type of uh, um, situation. Category. So would you not? Would you not want to perhaps have, see in my mind, I guess I was thinking like guild, but not area of concern. In other words, there could be a lot of conversations going on in the embassy and they could have different, each conversation would have a different so, area of concern potentially. So this is where you get into the situation right there. See how they're the same? That's okay. That means education is education's parent, right? Like it's, it's looping back into itself. So when you switch a context into this area of concern of education, you're right back at the guild level. So that, that's everything. Education, yeah. education means education all. Yeah. Like if, if I were, so if with, you wanted, with my proclivities, if I was programming it, I would say education all. Yeah. So in, know, here, but, in, in this case, it's, it's uh, the self, you got to, what I want to do is to create a heuristic of self-reference. And it's, so you're consciously aware of it. And so if you want to talk about the diplomacy guild, this isn't the select where you select it. You select it here, right? This is where you'd have that discussion about that guild in the education concern, in the education guild of its, of the corresponding area of concern. You wouldn't have that conversation. Oh. So the guild is, if you're talking about the guild, it's in education, but if you're, I don't know. Oh, that's an interesting yeah like, okay so we all we, we will you'll notice this kind of spot this kind of uh looping back this scenario happening all over the place um in, in well not all over the place but in specific space in specific spaces for it for instance this whole idea of of uh focus like if you should step into focus you should find yourself right back here mm. okay right? It should loop back because focus is this. So this reference, this self-reference is constantly being embedded into even the functionality of it. It's going to that, be confusing that at first. Part, that could be particular to your implementation perhaps though? Does that have to be ubiquitous to any implementation of that's just similar strange, software? That's just a strange loop that uh, represented. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Okay. So if you're going down the layers, you find and you wind up in the, where you began. That's what's called the strange loop, right? So you're trying. If you go to focus, you're going to focus back on whatever it is. The whole. The field research lab is determined. You need to focus on. No, it's going to be the whole. Focus, like drilling down into focus, right? Is the same is the same as um, stepping out of the specific context context into the whole. So you're looped back right where you began. So focus really is again it's education, it's immunity, it's environment. You know, like it's a very elaborate. Um, uh, okay. Focus is more. Uh, the details of focus is the details of the whole. So it's like a, um, it's this like a whole. This is kind of holonic. the problem of the whole, yeah, the holonic uh, structure that you're always seeing everything and everything else. Or Indra's net, if you've ever heard of that term being used. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, this is this is that this is that exemplified. I'm not particularly uh, concerned about the implementation because I want it to be um, explicit. Okay. This exclusivity is a matter of training, really. It's uh, it's a kind of a dojo too. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like because because we are talking about yeah. we are talking about matching mental models here. So if you're going to be ma uh, training somebody to match their mental model to something, you got to give them something to train with. But but yeah, again, it gets tricky. At what yeah. point do you? Uh, yeah. So so then mm. we can come back to the whole simplified dashboard thing, right? Because this is all explicit, uh, more focused tasks, um, depending on where you're actually about working can be simplified to that interface you know so we're not uh we're not we are interested in dropping people right off into the deep end but we're also interested in people swimming so <laughs> <laughs> swimming's good um when it, uh, it, okay so if we refocus focus i can't say focus anymore um <laughs> if we refocus on how we attach how we define the guilds and the areas of concern and at what level those are represented in this in this overall schema of schemas mm -hmm. so look here we're looking just like what we've split up messages into kind of different uh messages we're probably going to end up uh, having a whole bunch of different cards like uh so does that represent the card type that we're already we're trying to define um because we had card card attributes, we have title, schema, type, and so, perhaps tags. So perhaps so probably we're, what we're going to do is we're going to have a couple of cards that are built in, like these ones, and then a colloquial one for everything that's customizable. Right. So a card that uh, gives us the building block, and then the rest of it should be um, because. In this card, for instance, this is a reference in a card. This is reference in a card, right? So if we have those built-in ones, we create a new one. We give uh, them meaning from the built-in ones. We can then reuse this one as a more um, abstract kind of a card. So you're extending classes, you're yeah. saying, at that point? At that point, yeah, it's like code. So we, we wouldn't... There's so, not a. That's not a. a what deck, so an index is. card is part of a deck. Yeah. So then, but you need. You're saying there's going to be a card that defines that, what a deck is, and defines an index card and defines yeah. the index card as part of the deck. Yeah, it's all self-reference again. Okay, so that's that's the other strange loop on the card front that. Yep. I guess I'm having trouble representing in an actual model. Yeah. And by, by the way, this is where I, I basically trying to come up with the security around a very similar <laughs> back in back in 2003. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was I, it was in a much more specific application. However, I was working with the concept of an abstract block that would contain other blocks yeah. And that you, you know, it was, it was not dissimilar in its, um, yeah, you wind, yeah, you right? wind up and, doing the same thing. And then I was trying to come up with what the security would look like for these abstract nested, um, blocks at the time, I guess I was thinking of them as blocks, right? Which was much more, mm -hmm. it was much more along, along web development lines, honestly, but it's still, applies right you still basically yeah. have blocks that contain other blocks yeah. that contain certain it's, types of information or certain models right so yeah. and then you have to apply a security uh framework to those blocks or in this case we're going to inevitably have to apply some sort of security framework to the card model mm -hmm. um if for nothing else, like even if we say all cards are public within um, within a, a a group or within a, a uh, um, yeah, just so lost my words. So, so just pretend that there is a card for each dashboard we're looking at, and uh, anything underneath that, it's anything underneath that card is what uh, the con the security context is, right? 
So, it could so all... you're applying your permissions. So you know, and then and then how you represent what the table is where you represent those permissions because that's honestly where I kind of my mind broke at some point and probably uh, going to be one of the it. it's probably <laughs> going to be one of the specific card details that we're having. Um, yeah, so where was it? It's probably going to wind up somewhere in the uh, subclassing of this. So like, um, you would have like a dashboard right because all the cars are doing they're connecting all of the references symbol pieces together in a certain way right yes based on, certain, based on a certain way so what we'll do is we'll have a dashboard card and then we'll uh then we'll append to that as like a permission card of some sort Right, like this could be like the main programmatic. Pro this could be like the main unit of all, all abstract things in the. So where whereas the messages are like your free flow of stuff, this is this is like your abstract counterpart that gives it context, right? Yeah, and this is why I guess they're a part of the datum uh, spectrum. Do um, do messages have permissions? Messages belong to the conversations they're in. Um, in general, they're just, again, they're restricted to the dashboard. So, uh, hold on a second. I gotta put a sleeping child into his bed. One second. Oh, please. Hmm. I, I, Brian, I guess any, <laughs> any comments? And, and, and anybody's, you know, free at any point to tell me I'm way off the mark or that's not oh, what no, it's, we're doing. It's great uh, just to keep it rolling and I mean, keep developing. It's good. Um, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to iterating the different card types. I think that would be pretty neat. And as well, uh, to get into, like you've had some experience with the AO software. I'd like to try and uh, um, kind of map what, what the AO does and see if we can figure out how that maps into what what we're doing with this software yeah and that that gets at the heart of my question around what are the prerequisites for the interchange right like what yeah. if we're gonna if if and does this software have a working name forgive me is this we, we just call it the dashboard the um, dashboard but okay. yeah we've been working with the the idea that basically the ao is also the dashboard that it it, it we're, we're essentially trying to towards the same goal yeah AO definitely seems like a version of this yeah. same sort of thing so if we have the AO and we have the dashboard what what would facilitate card exchange right. essentially what how do we functionally make that work what does it look like what are you relying on for trust is it simply the connection that once we you know codify the connection between the systems that as long as somebody with sufficient permissions on each system accepts the connection that you're then enabled to exchange cards what other you know thing do you want to get down okay. to that that's to me a big so, part of the rub of it okay i think i can cover some of that um this right this connection there because a card gets dropped down as a message into some lobby, right? Whoever is in that lobby can take a look at that, right? Take a look at that card and potentially recreate the message or, uh, or do something with it, right? It can, uh, so once you, right? Because once you get this message somewhere here, where am I? Sorry. <laughs> Once you get the message somewhere here, right? It shows up like to something to this effect in your uh, flow of conversations, especially in the lobby. So that means that what it is can be referenceable here, right? And internally, the card that it's holding can be also referenced. So, so you can do something with that card once it appears in your lobby. But messages are going to be 
in the lobby. Messages are part of conversations so in the lobby as well. Imagine, yes. so, ima so imagine you're inside a conversation, right? You've created a whole bunch of messages in the conversation. Do messages have to be in conversations? Or can you, the free how do you? The free flow stuff, like the chatty kind of stuff, yeah. Right. Um, so, but you can then within that same conversation, click this, right, potentially. Um, you will assemble a card looking thing like that, right? And that will be posted into that conversation and everybody in the conversation can be looking at it and discussing it and whatnot. So that's the first step right there. So, so that's what we're, that's what we needed to find next then. Correct. What do you mean? Everything you just described is what we need to define in terms of the object schema that we're laying oh, yeah. out for. Yeah. For cards. So, so this already works in, even in, in the things that I've done, the way the messages work right now, that's already kind of the case. So this will, if, because this is just a new type of message, then uh, we already just took it into um, the existing system. Hey, Jen, yeah, you got that, that we were um, talking about like importing or doing an update between I, AO and uh, dashboard. Yeah, I, I kind of got a glimpse of that idea. Yeah, um, so I, just a quick thought, quick thought on that. Um, schema is important, so if we have cross mismatching schemas um, what what I think may may end up happening um, is that we could import data like import cards even a stream of cards or however you would you would call it um, into the dashboard into sort of like a conversation so at that point it would be kind of raw raw data and it would be up to uh, the operator to 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 take those that those bits of conversation and start um, pulling out the relevant data into the 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 schema that we're using in the dashboard. So yeah. that's and assuming it, that, that the schemas are mismatching. And 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 if you're clever enough, you can uh, probably uh, automate the same pr the, that process if the stream has got a pattern onto it or something. Yeah, if you can because, translate because between because the you can schemas. literally create cards that would do that. Right. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. ide ide again ideal world. Not uh, I don't even know how to do it yet, but <laughs> but, I, yep, but I'll do what it. we need to get to. But I'll well, do ideally, it. we're going to converge as well. Like we're yeah. The, so the, for, the, the channels are open for for development across like, platforms. I think that similar con similar in concept as to what our plans are for Telegram, and that's basically for Telegram. We want to build a bot that sort of handles a two way. Um, a two-way uh, view in a way okay. that uh, that hopefully uh, coaxes people to use the dashboard more than the Telegram part because it's more organized. But yeah, mm -hmm. we'll see. Very so, interesting. Yeah, so, and I, I like the idea of relying on bots within different, within other platforms for information exchange with the dashboard or with Yeah, so, so, so we give them the metadata they're lacking kind of a deal. Yes. Um, so that's huh. my thoughts on that. Fascinating, fascinating, very interesting. I so that it still is going to come back then to, um, yeah. How right? So right now, how are you? You said it it works right now, uh, or maybe I misheard you. But the the what functionally de, uh, um, enforces or what are you using for embassy versus bonfire? Oh, right now nothing. Uh, this is just right. Uh, okay. This is just all lobby. Um, so of that's stuff. part of what we have to define here, and I guess I'm still hung up on the guild and area of concern tie-in as well. So I, I'm seeing, you know, obviously you, you, we have these things specifically associated with the card, the title schema type, but then we have guilds, areas of concern. And I yeah, so, you so have what, a term for embassy versus great bonfire. Are you talking about uh, like levels of information? Uh, is what so I'm thinking. So this or? is the Holonic uh, structure. Holonic yeah. structure. So okay, this so is, you have the Holonic structure. So this will be your archetype. This will be your model. This will be your guild. This will be your Holon. Um, okay. The okay. archetype. The archetype is like kind of like your DNA. The 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 
model is kind of like all oh, what the DNA does. So it's like creating proteins, creating all of these different structures. And the great bonfire is like the cell or the cells of that DNA structure um, in general. So like yeah. I mean, the, the phenotype. We're kind of, yeah, we're trying to bring, <laughs> that's a lot of cross, <laughs> talk mm -hmm. about crossing models <laughs> going then, between holonic and, and cellular. Okay. Yeah, so this will be like your uh, social structure of that cell structure. So it's all the, it's so how do we, the intercommunications between those entities. How do we apply the levels of the holonic structure to cards and messages? Uh, actually the in reverse. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's so fine. So it okay. starts off. So we, what I've just done is built bottom up, right? Uh, conversations are actually a top down structure. So we have a more of a, we, we have like the more, like the unit is already given to us, right? It's about, it's, a, it's, we need to deconstruct it. We need to, uh, re reframe it essentially. And then we need to reintegrate it back into the, the archetypical the underlying system of the whole of the whole deal so that's where yeah. you see that's where this progression you're seeing this is really interesting feedback loop that happens there uh, because you can have conversations which are really um, kind of all over the place or not very coherent but then you can you can kind of um, piece the stories out of that find out what which parts are isomorphic um, get yeah this uh, is the workshop right there that. Yeah, so you end up going down, but then then you have this this kind of perfected sort of data, not perfected, but highly isomorphic, and then it and then it's that's the environment speaking to you. So you have this this data that's that's been uh, well created and curated, and then it and then you can look to that as guidance for doing the the process again. So it kind of goes down the loop, refines, comes up. Yeah. <laughs> if that made yeah sense, so but. so like so like you create let's say you created a card it's crappy but since it's in a message you can reference it in a new con like say you uh, just uh tackle it in a new conversation uh just about that card you decide whatever whatever and um you know out of that comes up a new idea a new card is being laid out and the process is refined etc etc mm -hmm. Do you yeah, edit is... cards? Do you edit cards to revise them? Do you simply make a new card? How does how, are, um, how is the revisioning of cards envisioned? I haven't envisioned it yet, <laughs> okay. but that's a good, great question. Um, revision is a pretty huge concern there, so I don't know how revision would work. Mm -hmm. But I'm yeah, a... things get kind of bound up into a context, and then you almost don't want to change it. I'm assuming what we'll have to do is fi figure out a way that plows forward with accepting the change, like like a, more like a, like how GitHub or Git yeah. works with its commits. Right. I think it should be more closer to that than. Uh, so so when you so when you're rolling something new, you're not necessarily uh, changing something. You're cloning and and committing a new uh, right. version of it, and so. That's you can, Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you want to see that so that your the the foundation that you're standing on isn't just constantly shifting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think well, this is a great question for a little, I have no idea how to. Uh, <laughs> but I think commit commit uh, a commit history and and that kind of a uh, idea should work quite well for it. Yeah. Just so commit. each card needs a version then. <laughs> It's just gonna have a revision history, yeah. Yeah. Look, look at a repository. Mm -hmm. no so word. what, what, uh, what attributes of the card? Um, what is, what is, what is the unique combination that identifies that card? Uh, or it, or not, uh, let me rephrase that. There's gonna be an ID on an individual actual data object that is a card however we're talking about revision history of cards and coherence of the card over time and changes over time so then how are you referencing the the cards the individual cards that make up the concept of of a single card over time so you it might need I mean? to have a unique id like you're saying Right. Well, then that's, well, that's, yeah. that's the question. Yeah. I guess something that's the whole question I'm trying yeah, to Yeah. It's to. just yeah. going to have to be addressable uniquely. It's going to be, there's a problem of meaning there, even from having different views. 
different purchases. Yeah, like a copy of a card could potentially be that card. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So this is like so far ahead, like I haven't even had time for the basics yet. Um, even the basics I have are fairly rudimentary. No, that's, that's, I'm not, there's no criticism at all. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just saying it's so far off the road that it, I yeah. haven't, uh, that I haven't even, uh, figured out how to frame it yet. Like sec this whole security thing, I'm looking at it and I'm like, are we going to do this, this part? Are we? Yeah, exactly. Is exactly. it going to be great? Does it going to look like that? Types eventually. Yeah, this is this is going to be what this this whole section of this diagram. It's going to be just that. Yeah, like uh, when you left last for for a minute there, um, Todd and I were talking about that. Um, that I'd like to get into what the AO is doing. Try to um, try to give it better context in relation to our work on the model and on these card types and try to figure out what has AO already implemented in in the type, as in a card type, um, I guess for a number of reasons, but to help AO development, but also to um, kind of solidify our own understanding of, of the concrete uh, triad um, with the commitments, um, timelines, that kind of stuff. Um, so what um, could you could you briefly, Brian? I know I know I know this is a subject you could probably spend a lot of time on, but mm -hmm. could you could you just list off what that triad? Um, yeah, yeah, it's we or we call it the devotional triad as well, and this is this is mapping with the the holon the holonic. Right. Um, so we have um, originally we call it execution. This was in the concrete slot, um, and then we have. A commitment and then we have a narrative um, so that's like so the execution is course correlates to the bonfire um, yeah commitment to the gardens or the crystal obelisk rather it's which is the abstract and then uh, this is the mimetic the uh, feel it correlates with uh, the narrative which is like mm -hmm. this unnameable aspect of what's going on <laughs> so kind so of narrative the, is field research Okay. Yeah. It's the, the archetypical slot versus yes. the model or guild slot. So it's kind of like the the living dynamic output of, of what happens when you negotiate between the concrete and the abstract. So an, another way of looking at that is so if, if you see that narrative narrative itself is in the the, the mimetic slot, um, that's what you get when you have commitments and you're executing upon them. So let's say you set up a, a commitment to do a meeting and then you see so your, but you're preparing for that meeting beforehand. You're doing all these things throughout space time. So such that, you know, the next, the day, the day after or whatever, you can look back at yesterday and say, that was my narrative. I prepared for a meeting and in fact, I did have a meeting and it went well, right? And that was because you had commitments there, not only that, but you executed upon them. And that's that's uh, that takes a skill of, of accountability, uh, which is to basically do what you say you want to do. And so the, the skill here is is to be able to form the stories throughout your life that you want to have that you're committing to. So okay, that make, makes sense. <laughs> That no, yeah, that 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 makes sense. I think yeah. that's um, we're, we're we're not we're not autopilot people. <laughs> Right. So this, what, what, what I mean by that is that it's more deliberate. Like, right. Uh, if you've noticed uh, the way Brian described it, it's like you're not sitting there, kind of like waiting for things to happen. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a kind of a, it's a kind of like an effort. This is where the skill comes in. It's like it, it's a mm -hmm. huge effort. It's spending the energy in. <laughs> basically focusing in on that thing, which this is why focus is like such a strong word in the, in this context. Um, mm -hmm. It's because like of this deliberate, deliberate and constant awareness and the constant, uh, you know, like not letting uh, your autopilot sort of kick in, in the whole process. Uh, so, yeah. and I think the, the AO seemed to facilitate that through the, the Oracle part of the dashboard that yeah. was intended to take things that you have given priority to and things that other people have given priority to that are also 
within essentially within a proximity guild to use crossover language right to to say okay this is the people are here to work on this and we've agreed this is a priority so this is what our area of focus is should be now at least that was my understanding of it hmm. mm -hmm. i'm just uh -huh. sharing that right now you, you have that game right or yeah that, i don't have, yeah, it, I have it running um so i and i'm not too great with this <laughs> but so that's the oracle i have nothing there right now i am so triggered oh wait yes i do <laughs> yeah there's i know well yeah it's it, 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 it's a Guilty. different way of presenting information <laughs> no i know yeah. but part of the reason why we have like the terminology that we do is to avoid um is to avoid any, <laughs> anything that's like uh no this is the opposite this is like intentionally <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the things, what, 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 and that's there's a language there. There's a like I I get I get that you know um, the, the the graphic design there is just amazing. <laughs> well, it's not meant to be. It's meant to be extremely you know a basic functionality again. But yeah, you, yeah. there's not. Yeah, uh, you, you can you can make a card a mission. And and so th and this is part of what I wanted to try to get down to, but I never got down to this with Anders or with with anybody else that was involved in the actual AO development on like, okay, so you have a card at the Zettelkast in game, you can send that card, or you can give that card to people. So there's a construct that associates people with the card, and you can see that incorporated into the card. You can prioritize the card, <laughs> what Brian's showing right now, yeah. and then. Oh God! Yeah, so now <laughs> Zenia, Zenia, I thought you knew all this. I I'm, thought you were. <laughs> I'm dying. He's, I'm he's, dying a little on the inside right now. He's currently being shocked. It's shock therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I've had. Uh, I understood it conceptually, it but I've never got it to run. <laughs> So yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I I've gotten it to run as well, and I started looking at the code as much as I could, but then I realized basically I needed to learn a lot more about certain things, and then probably just talk to somebody to like get the right coherence, right? Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> ideally, you could do it all through the cards. However, I just don't think it was at that point yet. You know what I mean? Plus, we all agree that. Yeah, that conversations like this bring coherence a lot more quickly than mm -hmm. drawn out asynchronous typing. And so this this is exactly why uh, the um, main conversation engine is like focused on that. Like, yeah, sure, it's chat like right now, but that's not the be and the null of how it's supposed to be, right? That's just like one implementation of it. Yeah, so, so I think we're displaying the HODL principle here. And <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm not too like. I Anders showed me through this a couple times, but I still don't quite get it. Um, I mean, I can kind of navigate my way around to the different pages, but as far as how it actually works, um, the like when when we um, promote something to a mission, that's what I've been equating with a proximity guild. So I don't it know is. if that's I how agree. it actually functions. Yeah, so you can have a bunch of people on the same mission. Um, and within those, you'll have like different. So this is what the AO doesn't have yet, though. the The reason that I made these into a blue card is because it's a protocol, right? Which is part of the it, core. And it just has the colors, but they don't have inherent meaning. Yes. So so that's kind of, and this is kind of like a grace that that's that's great for the AO that it um, they've. Uh, Anders and uh, his people have, um, um, like, with their uh, what do you call it, hack, hack zone <laughs> or whatever the hacker space, uh, they've been using this to to organize a hacker space. Um, so it's kind of set up for doing tasks. Like, if I check that off, it's like I did the core. But like, and what does that mean? Like, um, so. Uh, membership in the guild so like there there is nothing to integrate protocols like how do I actually do membership in the guild when I when I go in into that I guess I'm in it right now I don't know um, but but like there should be protocols for how to how to actually get those done like any kind of commitment should come with its corresponding constraints and those constraints are being held together by protocols so like this kind of thing isn't really uh, 
it's not really defined, but we can we can kind of reference it, but it's not it's not integrated into the software yet. Yeah, so it doesn't have like it doesn't have uh, an ability to take all of that information in this beautiful card of yours, run it through a process like what we're thinking with the field research lab and convert it into like an event condition action kind of a deal where mm -hmm. it just actually has yeah. meaning meaning to whatever it is you're doing no there's definitely no field research type of concept yeah. as far as i can tell there, there's other things that i think are very functional and mm -hmm. um and i think and we're lifting them i think we're lifting the like verbatim <laughs> as far as that goes uh, maybe not in the same uh, language but um well with some of the hypercard you know, concept and that the, the, the idea of a card is extremely ubiquitous in, in the AO. It, it, it is everything. It's just yeah. all cards. Yeah. yeah so so if, you, if, if you notice, even though we have a lot of uh, extra stuff here, as soon as we hit the spot, we're like talking about how it's going to manage permissions, the dashboards, it's, it's going to manage this, that, the other thing. So literally it does come down to cards being here. It's, it's the same core unit. Um, just a lot more um, hyperactive, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that's, card that's certainly part of it. Like, look, look, imagine creating yeah. a card. So th this is, and this is where you would, so this is prioritized as a mission. And so then you would, you know, this is where you're figuring out what to work, perhaps, is that, and, and if you had done this with other things, if you had upvoted other, <laughs> in their nomenclature, upvoted other things, then they would show up in that, in that um, dashboard as well. And you'd be like, okay, this is the stuff that I need to work on. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And there is, a lot of differences there but the, the the other one of the other key things with this although is that there is you know I, I don't know if we want to i don't i don't care if we get into all the functionality of the bull stuff uh because there's i don't know if there's anything proprietary there essentially but the um they do implement functionality such as uh pouring somebody a beer out of a machine there right so you could theoretically essentially buy somebody a beer at this place now which it sounds like a totally arbitrary thing but what you're doing is you're saying well i'm going to buy somebody a beer and i you know approve of this and it's going to actually go execute and do that potentially um you're also tying in with other other systems that talk the same language right and there's and there's a central reserve that unicorn <laughs> yeah the dabination unicorn yeah why is it in the way <laughs> um it's a whole nother it and this is uh okay you have your vision of different levels of dashboards this is the different levels of dashboards it's it's areas that are over crossing and you know but yeah here we're actually changing the color of the sidewalk so there's there's functional tie-in to real world this is how <laughs> yeah, you know it's funny like you're, you're actually changing something in a room here so for yeah. example now if you start talking about gardening and you have a robot that does your your gardening then somebody could come in and run the robot to do the gardening and read results or something and have human interaction that's necessary to determine you know okay we're we're not quite at the point where the robot knows when to pick this stuff so i'll i'll tell it yes this is ready to pick or the robot doesn't pick anything it just waters and 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 does nutrients and so now i have a camera and i'm going to go in and see okay yeah it, i i agree that the feedback from the robot is what I think it is and you know so you can see where there's potentially tie-ins between cards that define missions um, and I'm mixing terminology here and I don't know how it all comes together but there's yeah. cards that define missions that human agents are participating in but then could relate to um, both some sort of trading um, of, of some sort of value within within the system um, and also um, interaction with real world something, uh, specifically um, automatronics, you know, right, of, of some kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually there was, uh, we, we talked a lot um, with Anders about um, 
the, this idea, like you can see here how I've, I've, um, I've had a number of uh, tasks within this uh, Zello casting game commitment and then check them off as I go along. So you could have this as requirements for, for, for becoming a member of a specific proximity guild. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, you, you could have a whole list of things that ha you have to run through for the standard uh, like kind of checklist or whatever. Um, and you can see where people are at. You have a list of different names of people who are trying to go through that process. Um, so it's it's kind of neat. Like there's a lot of functionality already built in uh, just by the fact that uh, they've been uh, sprinting towards implementation, uh, which is kind of like uh, the top-down approach just based on their needs. Whereas we've been going from kind of bottom up um, just based on what uh, kind of like the the academic side of of uh, the mechanics of perception and whatnot, how it how it works and comes together, um, and then and then trying to fit that into the into the world, into how how it works. So these projects coming together from the bottom uh, bottom up and top down uh, should be like this is this is. Um, probably pretty great way to that we've we've ended up doing it yeah sometimes it's just hard to mesh Bach with a pop song <laughs> well and this is and this is one of the other things I guess I wanted to try to drive coherent on is like okay so if we're you know I'm just talking about a software there's two different groups at least there's more right but that in this circle we're talking about, there's two different essentially versions of this thing going on. How would they start to, how would we start to define how they could potentially interact? Because that's, you know, whether or not I'm going to personally contribute to this or, you know, but then future, future people joining the endeavor, right? There could be somebody that comes in, they already have significant amounts of development done in their own right. And they're tied to their vision. They don't want to start over. However, if we say he, here's, here are the here's the interface here's the uh, um, uh, uh, you know uh, API or however you want to mm -hmm. look at it that that where we can actually exchange and connect on these platforms then we can people can keep going with their individual development and yet we'll still have a way to start to gain coherence on this and I guess this comes down mm -hmm. to some of the scepter original ideas was that anything that falls within the separate well from what i was reading anyway at one point uh, you know that anything that essentially falls within the scepter system would be able to talk to anything else within the you know that that sort of system mm -hmm. right yeah so i think that just big get based on what i'm seeing from the demo of brian presented here is that is basically that uh the cards are closer to uh what we have as a message right i think yeah, I well, I think they're ubiquitous. I think the cards are cards and messages in this world, and that's something that well, we that's have, something that was called out, right? That they didn't have a special message construct. Yeah, we, and we acknowledge that there's this kind of uh, discrepancy and the connection yeah. and all of that yeah. thing. So I think what they have, just just like from my soft, like from my developer point of perspective, what they have is just this, or basically that. Oh, I'm um, sorry. Can you share again? Um, Oh, I'm, Brian, I'm not sharing. Right? No, it's just because Brian was sharing. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah. Brian. It's fine. Uh, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. We're probably yeah. looking at what they have as cars is probably what we have as here. Right? Um, I, because I think they just don't separate. I think it's all datum. You know what I mean? They're, what they're calling card is maybe what we would call datum because it's ubiquitous and you can shove anything in there and you can have cards and other cards and. Oh, okay. You know, so they say so they do the do the do that. Okay. So it's, it's like a ubiquitous yeah. datum and, and, and a ubiquitous datum that has a kind of an implementation, a free flow implementation, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I, 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 that's the way it, I interpret it anyway. It's yeah. it's this with more of that than than that. I, I generally agree. I think. Okay. From what I've seen, I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm no, not an so expert. We can pick it apart and figure out what exactly no, it is. So the reason it. that no, the reason I'm, I'm mentioning all of this is that we can identify. Okay, these are the parts that are done by that system, right? These are the parts that are not done by that system, and this is what we bring to the table. But, yeah. We can we can work on it from that perspective. That's that's why I'm uh, separating uh, it out like that. 
So, so yes. did, would the exchange be, would, do we think we would want to facilitate change with other compatible systems at the datum and referenceable I level? I see no reason why we couldn't feed a system like theirs cards based on uh, criteria you would understand uh, that, that got assembled through criteria that we understand. Like I see no difference. Right. In, no, no okay, so do we, do we need a separate part of the model that is devoted to translations of other systems from our model? Um, you know what I mean? Like it, like what APIs. is that? It's just well, APIs. yeah, essentially APIs. <laughs> yeah, and that's where, that's where I, I'm, I'm curious if that's, and uh, you know. So I, we could I'm not trying to push any particular agenda, no, no, no. but you know, what, what if we're, it? like I said, if there's multiple development happening at the same time, how do we so, allow that to happen, but still, you know, try to facilitate enough coherence so that the systems will be able to talk about well, it. Well, first we have to pick our battles. Um, that's <laughs> yeah, that's, that's number okay. one. Yeah. Uh, second, um, anything that's not done now is still potential to be done later, right? So, sure, sure. so if if you take those two together, you probably would want to um, a, a collect the ideas that you actually want to implement, which is what we've done already. Um, see and to recognize what is similar, what isn't, and B is then after we're verifying what we want, like we can add those in as necessary, right? So one of the things that I think this should be first is actually not AO, but uh, the Telegram groups. But that's, okay. beca that's because we already have something to flow that into. Like if you see, look at what we so have. You, yeah, you'd be more committed be, to the bots. But are bots there. the same? Are bots the same interface as another system? Or is there system interfaces and bot interfaces and those kind of I would have to implement something really unique to uh, the way this functions. Um, so it would have to be a translation layer entirely that, that sort of manipulates Telegram a certain way and manipulates and, and relays that information back a certain way. Um, on the front of AO and anything like that, even the Telegram front uh, as is, basically, the raw system that I'm thinking of doesn't have that, but it has the potential to have it through these this process of card creation, right? So by creating these cards, they can feed into this research lab and operate and do things. One of those things could be reading APIs and whatnot. Do you see how what I'm kind of trying to get at here? Like, yes, I think I do. Not, um, again, again, it's not going to be like, a, not everybody's going to be doing stuff like that. Like, this is something that should probably be seeded and built in and whatnot when it comes out. I'll be right back. Well, and that's... But the ability yeah. to, to, to work with, to, to, but the ability to add something in like that using the interface should definitely be there. Well, and that, I, I mean, that's where I guess I'm getting hung up a little bit on... Uh, yeah, how much do you program in first and how much is originated by the cards? And I think your vision is that a lot more is Pushed bootstrapped the directly from the cards. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, I, because of what I want is the cards and the um, main schema to match. Once they match and you and it's a workable system, that, that's, the, that's the starting point of where uh, the next la layer can be built on top of it. And that's where the cards come in. So, so how do we define the type of card that can define card? Like what is that, so, what is that bootstrap card look like then? So, so we'll definitely have a card for the deck which represents this whole deal, right? This whole idea of crystal, crystal obelisk. I got to change that name, sorry. Um, we're going to have one that details what um, it means to be a card inside of that. We're going to, so we're going to have one that details what the schema is. We're going to have to detail a few schemas of our own that are built in, right? Like model, protocol, all of these um, things that need to come from somewhere. So these are the build. So we want to give those built in blocks that represent this piece, this piece, that piece, the other piece. So then perhaps I'm asking what, language 
are the cards, are these master cards going to be in, right? They need to be able to be interpolated as um, as methods or as yeah, definitions yeah. within a, a, an actual computer model. Yeah. So, so what right, language right are we using? Yeah. Right, right now we're calling it model speak. <laughs> And it's a language. So we're defining we're defining a language that's it's that kind of we. It's I, rather, I mean, is that implemented as XML? It's just implemented as Ruby class or as classes within. Right now, it's a, just Ruby classes. Yeah. Um. If if you're talking about like a script, it's basically English. Um. With specific terminology being um of partic of peculiar meaning. We usually, if you notice, uh, when we type on in the lobby anything, especially me. Um, I tend to capitalize a lot of specific words over and over and over again. Um, those would be things like focus, immunity, like all of the keywords you're seeing on the screen right now. Um, the lot okay. of them, uh, the lot of them are terms. They're they're model speak terms, so they have already kind of like an attached, imbued meaning. Um, uh, that that comes a lot, a lot of it is just mental gymnastics, of course, and it's not a computer meaning, but it flows in such a way that you can actually sort of program with it. So it's interesting. I, I, this is kind of like where I'd like to see it. It's going to be a proof of concept from, uh, from one end as well. Uh, so the language isn't one that exists. It's what we uh, refer to as model speak. And if I believe if um, strunk, like I've I've done some comp compilers before. Like I've I've del I've de what delved into this kind of stuff. Um, I believe it could be uh, utilized to great effect. I'm more concerned with connecting like anything on this card uh, that you see hashed. Uh, like so long as I can, so long as I can rep use these as references back to um, these referenceable objects. Right, as long as that's the case, a lot of uh, the speak, if you will, is already given to you. Of how to, be, a lot of the language is already given to you by just by just being these constructs already. Does that make any sense to you? Um, it does. Um, sorry, I was trying to absorb that mostly. Yep. Um, so it does make sense to me, but I, I guess I'm, yeah, I'm hung up on, so we still have to define that in some way. So we're not going to write yeah. our own programming language, I'm assuming. So, yeah, I mean, you're programming in Ruby. Ruby. So, I mean, there's constraints that exist within what we choose for implementation, yeah. right? That That's going to drive some of this. Yeah. And when we're talking about what the cards look like, that are able to these master cards that are able to essentially serve as configuration points for this for the system yeah we have to define yeah we have to define how you write those cards and quite a few of them yeah. as the core bootstrap for being able to define other things yeah. by those cards but see that's actually not that huge a deal for me because i've already done that by writing the program right all I have to do really is use the is, is to create another representation of the same schema I've already done. Now, if I can get those two things uh, to be coherent with each other, you can have both, both you can have like a feedback system between the two. So are you gonna make So you see the schema right in front of you, right? Yeah, yeah. So imagine that I take a whole bunch of these cards and in them define, redefine all of this. Okay, right. How you say redefine, in what language? And, and your answer then in is it, in... It's, it's more unique to it, to the card, right? Like it's... A, it's a, ah, but uh -huh. that's the rub. It can't be, it has to be implementable. Well, it's implementable in the sense that we're not, we, we, we already get the terminology from this schema. Right, we can, so for instance, uh, a card to create emails, right? A card to hook up an email to a basic profile 
all of these things could be in, in, in encoded in the, in the side of a card that that speaks some kind of operation language, some kind of selection language, and some kind of uh, result language, right? Which could all be done like, okay, select box, which uh, kind of data are you trying to reference? Select the kind of that, select the uh, more granular type or whatever, right? So I apologize. I think I just lost about the last 20 seconds because uh, my internet cut out for whatever reason. Um, so yeah. I apologize. What was the last thing you heard? Uh, last thing I heard was uh, uh, <laughs> essentially you were starting to go into, I, I, we're still stuck on, uh, yeah, I'm still stuck on how the card so, is going okay. to inform so, the programming. So here's, here's we, have a, we have a running example of a schema, right? This, right. is like, this is solidified outside of this "quote unquote" language that we're we're talking about. Because you've actually programmed it. it; exists in code in Ruby, right? Yeah, yeah. So now imagine we're taking a card and we're saying, "Okay, this uh, this is a protocol card that's built in for creating a password, uh, a new password, or something to that effect." Right. So that card would know how to reference profiles right because it's built in so we're giving it that ability it knows how to reference this it knows how to reference how does it know how we're going to build it right this is part of the bootstrap so pretend there's a bunch of cards that we're imbuing into the system they're unique to right and we're, we're getting back into that that idea of uh, having different card types such as the event, mm -hmm. such event, as Event, condition, and action. Yeah. Right. What we want to do is we want to have cards that end up being events, end up being conditions, and end up being actions. Um, and an action is already defined because the system already does some actions, right? You, an event could be defined by listening to those actions so it's already got bootstrapped and a further action could be a combination of uh, possible actions so, so I, that I exist if creating this this environment like almost like a virtual layer which which virtualizes itself so i wonder if if we would be able to look at that and have this this full sort of programming language which we can look at to see what the program itself is doing, but then extend that into our lives as well using well, that the, same language. If you if you had noticed what's going on here, we have a this is is the re, is the feedback system of this. So here you're talking a bunch of stuff, and this is telling you how uh, how fitting that is into the grand scheme of things in general. So it's a feedback loop, a mirrors. This is you talking, this is the system talking. This is you analyzing, this is the system analyzing. You know, like this is two pair, this is a mirror image of each other. Mm -hmm. Automated and non-automated. Um, so, I don't know what concern that addresses, sorry about that. But uh, yeah, Brian is on the money with the whole idea of the card being different types, like imagine a, a one of the I imagine like the, the first kind of cards that we're going to be having are the ones that define schemas for things like conversations, things like basic profiles, things like um, you know basically whatever you're seeing already here, they're going to be, try to represent all of that in 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 a, in a specific way. Um. In terms of language, I don't think it's going to be like a scripting language or anything like that. I think it's just an interface that says, okay, place this referenceable in this spot, uh, select your condition in that spot. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? It's not I think going we're, to be- We're gonna find the same, the probably the same uh, capacity or capabilities of, of what we see in Scepter, where you're you're kind of defining these receptors and these membranes, and you're you're setting up triggers or heuristics for what data passes through the membrane and and what events yeah. trigger the membrane, that kind of stuff. Ideally, that would be the internal mechanism of how it's done, even so. Like, I wouldn't want to reinvent that if I don't have to. But there we are. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, it's 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 the same idea. You're right. Um, the I think the only hang up you have is the fact that we have uh, the same system sitting in two different places, one of which is inside of itself. Is are do the separate definitions exist um, outside of a, a mental space or? No, look, you literally have to bootstrap it with cards that represent what you already have. Okay. So so what you were just talking about, Brian, where you say, where you're talking about the membranes and triggers, is that, is that laid out anywhere or is that just been so, so this is That's the main uh, operation, operations here. Um, so you're talking about like documentation from Scepter? Essentially, yeah. I think they do, don't they? Sorry, they did. What? Did like what? Scepter had documented their, their framework. Yeah, white pages. Yeah. I mean, they're not complete, but a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff there. Yeah, I'll see if I can track it down. Yeah, I, um, I just didn't know if it was possible to bring, you know, again with the coherence, but <laughs> bring coherence. What, what is the top level coherence that we need to have? That's where I'm still, I keep driving upwards. In terms of, okay. What do you, what is top level coherence to you? That there is, there's a scepter framework that is describing things a certain way. There's the way that you're describing them within the uh, holonic and mimetic models. Yeah. And then I think there's, we, we could, if I could be so bold, I think I could say there is some sort of, <laughs> maybe general public mm, perception of, of, of information to mesh with so mentally, from either of these, you know what I mean? So um, our work literally begins in mental spaces only, not computing spaces. So uh, the entire dashboard is an outsourcing of your mental process. So on one hand, understood, and, and I don't I know we've gone through this, so I don't I don't want to repeat. I just want to maybe expand or I, I'm so, saying that to show the bridges. So like if we're talking about layers, we're we're gonna have a layer of scepter being the generic um, com platform of communication itself and how it, okay and how it communicates. The dashboard is utilizing that. Uh, system of communication for this purpose that we're discussing now. So you've and so the purpose is is to reflect the mental structure of outside of the computing space entirely, so that the mental space and the computing space and the and the uh, structural uh, platform space and the natural space in which it belong in which it operates itself, um, they're all. Uh, repeating the same sort of pattern of dna to uh uh to mm -hmm. to, to, to to species to nature to, to cell to all of these kinds of uh it's just building on the same structure over and over and over and over and over again and our kind of like litmus test is essentially is like are we still just raising the same thing to the next layer up above it or are we creating a shit show out of that layer <laughs> Okay. So if we're raising that layer and so here's where this whole mental thing really is important. It's like we've raised it all the way to a conceptual layer now with the dashboard. Now we're raising this conceptual layer with your whole life. Do they still match? Right? Okay. So this is and with that I'll be right back. No, that's no problem. Okay. Um Oof. I just put a link in the lobby to the white scepter white papers. Uh -huh. You can probably find some stuff there. Um, but yeah, I think what Jenny was just talking about there is um, this concept we find in uh, the Jeb book, Godel Escher Bach. And it's, it's the idea of uh, the sort of the natural holarchy where whenever you're adding a layer, that layer itself has to reflect the other layers. So we don't want to be just arbitrarily creating a layer which which doesn't which isn't isomorphic with with those below it. And that's that's what allows it to be um, continually refreshed and regenerated as opposed to something that you have to keep uh, maintaining from uh, from um, okay. dissolving. 
and I, so I think that <clears throat> that white paper page may get to, yeah, this might help to get to some of the. Some of the ideas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, pluggable protocol for protocols is, I think, maybe where we're churning right now. Perhaps mm -hmm. I, without, I, I need to drill into this, but I, I don't. From what you know, would you kind of agree that when we're talking about these, I mean, you we, were talking about putting a protocol on a card and executing that card, and so therefore we're talking about essentially a pluggable protocol mm -hmm. in in card form, right? And that is still in their considered in their concept stage, whereas they've, yeah, and we also, but we're almost going, this is where we're going up a layer, right? So we're defining, we're defining the concept of pluggable protocols, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that it's I feel like this is the top level I'm talking about in, in, including perhaps the Scepter core stuff. And just then, so if, are we building off is is this building off that or is this an alternate representation of the same uh it it should be the same J just the way that like their philosophy i guess to be simply uh mimicking nature that's kind of the idea and we've been doing the same the, okay. the main kind of difference is they've been going after the uh the network, the computational aspects, and essentially trying to create a computational uh, neurological network out of like computational nodes. Uh, whereas we we've been um, focusing on the uh, the wetware or the meat, if you will. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, which which they both need each other. Like they both, you have to have coherence in both spaces for uh, for them to work properly together. So you have to understand how the scepter or a hollow chain or hollow environment is working uh, in order to like you have to wrap your head around it in order to use to use it properly. Um, like the idea of having your own view on the network is very foreign to people who who would. Who are used to like the World Wide Web as it is right now, or you just go to the server yeah. and it tells you what the view is, right? Or you or you check your Bitcoin wallet. Everyone agrees what the Bitcoin wallet is, like what how much is in that wallet. Um, but they they use a term called agent centric, as opposed to data centric. So the Bitcoin model is is like data centric, where what matters is how much is in that wallet, and everyone in the world has to agree. Um, the agent centric model is kind of flips that around and, and, and says, um, uh, everyone has their own perspective on, on the data and, but, but still like stuff like integrity and security is still important. Like if I sign something, if, if I tell you that I signed an agreement with you to give you money or something in return for a service. And then the network can verify the service happened. Well, you better, you should get the money, right? Kind of thing. Like, um, yeah. But but that 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 peer to peer type interaction, the whole network doesn't need to know about it. You don't have to just fill a blockchain with that, right? You just you just okay. need to be able to verify that that in fact I signed that thing, and then be able to to tell people like, look what happened. Agreed. <laughs> like, this guy didn't give okay. me money. Okay. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, and the only people who care about so, that is within your web of trust, like close to people who are close. Okay. To you. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're is that like, okay? That person they they may be shady. So based on this transaction, which didn't happen properly, I maybe shouldn't trust them. But someone on the other side of the world doesn't care. Just so okay. that may be a tangent completely, but <laughs> no, I don't think that is a tangent. I think that relates yeah exactly to the heart of what i'm trying to get at which is so yeah is this are we talking about developing the you know i i, I can wait for zenny to get back to you know, back. are we talking about oh <laughs> I, I just just sat down <laughs> perfect no that's okay um so we were just kind of going over the scepter framework and the hollow the whole hollow framework kind of mm -hmm. concept yeah and i guess Agent that's is data centric that's perhaps part of where my my miss my yeah what what i'm trying to under 
first of all, obviously this is education still for me to try to mesh with, with what's going on. Um, but then like what I feel I'm trying to bring coherence to is I'm looking at um, sort of their definition of, you know, uh, sovereign accountable commons and uh, their scepter core with grammatic capabilities and the evolution of complete adaptive systems. And yeah, you know, this, you know, a fractal virtual machine system framework yeah. is, is that, I think maybe that's what I'm talking about. Like this yeah. level this, of this, definition. This is, so this card is probably what I would implement as a hollow, um, as a hollow database thing in itself. Like the, the whole idea of the protocols that they have, this is probably, yes. this is probably the corresponding piece. Like, and that's, I think that's where I'm going with this. So, so yeah. they're attempting, so in the scepter framework, they're attempting to define a pluggable protocol and how the implementation of a pluggable, pluggable protocol in your framework, you're attempting to define cards that would have a type that would allow them to be essentially fulfill that pluggable protocol function in yeah. the research lab section. So, so if you were to uh, look at it as a scepter system, this would just be that kind of protocol um, raw. Uh, uh, like, there's no need to look re reinvent the wheel in that sense. And uh, what would happen is is that they'd be j simply gently nudged towards uh, this structure of the dashboard that uh, we've been uh, discussing all along, right? And potentially, you can think about every. Um, yeah, if we're like talking full fledged scepter implementation, like this would be a receptor. Okay. Like so do you do you feel or, the dashboard fits within a scepter oh, it's, model? It's, it's entirely uh assuming it. Okay, okay, okay. It's, it assumes it, yeah. It assumes it. Okay. That's so okay. So that we're, we are literally talking about the same thing. When you're attempting to define a card mm -hmm. that functions as a protocol, defines a protocol and can function as a protocol, mm -hmm. we are talking about an actual implementation of the idea of a pluggable protocol in the Scepter model. Yeah, except with one caveat, of course, is that we're including a very different dimension here. Right. This there's no there's no room in Scepter for this part. This part. Ah. And, ah. and, and the actual con connect connecting these two into that um, protocol, which is what would happen here. Ah. So right. this is an extrapolation and further so, beyond that. But yeah. you would still have the core of what you need to interact with another system using Scepter. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, I would like to say that um, not every card would be that. It would be just specific types, subtypes, right? Because some of the cards are are never going to participate here uh, as, as a point of uh, functionality. Like maybe as content, sure, like display this notification. And this so, is, and that's the notification, know, sure. While you were gone, so while you were gone, Brian was talking about the agent-centric model and sort of the idea that somebody else on the other side of the world doesn't necessarily have to know about our interaction, you know, in our within our proximity guild, um, and whether or not you know I'm trustworthy within the proximity guild if they have nothing to do with my proximity guild, right? Yeah. And, and, and that being the agent centric model. And so that meshes, I think, with what you're talking about with the field research lab on that. Some things are, it, we're, we're really talking about a question of salience within the network at that point, right? That's the driving concept that, I that's I a part of it. Look that up for <laughs> salience, salience. I don't use that term. It's like significant. Oh yeah, no. Uh, I, I think, and I, I'm hard to, <laughs> I to use thought. a better word. <laughs> I think it means relevance, kind of. Yeah, My yeah, case. but it, to me, it's it's more powerful than that, I guess. No, and that prominence is not. Prominence. I agree that uh, um, as an adjective. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitions of words. Interesting. It's a, it's uh, a good word. Um, yeah. The quantity, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, 
I just, it, it, and uh, I guess the way to try and describe the way I'm using that term um, in the way I, I think of it is I think of it very much as a, is, in mental constructs in terms of relating to openness, right? The more open you are, the more items that you may consider salient to your existing context. Uh-huh. And and so some you know some ways of thinking are characterized by giving a lot of salience to a lot of things. You're you're pulling a lot more into your context that may span far beyond what other people would consider part of the same context. Hmm. So what are and, and and I think a lot of times when we're trying to mesh information and do the handshake protocol, it's a question of largely I think a question of defining what is salient to a context and and. It, what is important or yeah. relevant to the context? Uh, not just right? the context, but uh, like uh, context is viewed from every single perspective differently, right? Uh, agreed, so, agreed. But then that's where, and, how and, do you... Worse, worse, um, it, it can switch from one minute to the next for each individual. Agreed, um, so, agreed. Like, it, that's that quite... why I think it's very tricky, tricky to represent and that's part of what we're trying to get to here, right? Like I get the feeling that as you move towards your obelisk level, uh, 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 sorry, holonic, holonic level, is that the right term? That yeah. the holonic level of, of the obelisk is about somehow taking agents that have um, some sort of acknowledged skill to be able to tag or pull out relevant datum from conversations to put into cards to contribute to the protocols that will be used in the field research laboratory to loop back to the to the conversation levels. Yeah, right? as a, as a, yeah. To basically like manage the entire system overall. Okay, so. I, it seems like maybe I'm starting to get actually <laughs> gain coherence with what you're trying to do. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's the, like I said, it's the same process of like self improvement, uh, like in, internally for a person. And the system is uh, agreed. Just, just agreed. repeating that, the, the, repeating that same idea. The same thing that any work group should have or any sort of programming methodology that's seeking mm. to improve on previous programming that's- and incorporate new features. And I'd say it's got a pretty strong filtering mechanism because um, you'll get a lot of people hidden here and here, right? Yeah. We talked about this a little bit. Well, yeah, Not that many people really care to absorb the information to even meaningfully. Like, and that's what I've seen too. I don't, I think so you, you... The managerial types will probably use that much more loosely, like nothing to do with this. Um, Maybe some small interface could be allowed, like uh, create like simple like to do tasks, task lists and stuff like that should be incorporated into all of this. Yeah, something like that. I mean, because there is a question of participation. And I think, <laughs> well, the, the degree to which you could pull people up to the obelisk garden level is dependent on how effective your your envelopes are at the bonfire level. Yeah. Right? If we're trying to get all the way into the speak. And yes. so another feature of this that I'm just thinking about is it's kind of funny, but um, you can literally trash this thing, right? Like you can make it so incoherent and dead that it's just like not going to be able to function at all. Yeah. I, I, yeah. If you don't, if you don't have the right and I models, if you don't have the right protocol built out and the right models, then it, it's just totally incoherent. Yeah. Like it definitely relies on, folks operating to develop the schema and so i think that uh, those kinds of uh, da- like like if we assume that they're all dashboards that that's like the point of um separation of inner and outer for the system like a, like let's call it the dashboard the cell of the uh, organism that we're discussing right um okay. i just want to look talk about it in terms of uh, it, it it can come into a, a, a full creature kind of a deal with multiple dashboards working together and it could be a, kind of like a cell by cell kind of a basis where they're you know functionally isolated from each other but maybe communicate in some different fashion like species to species or something to that effect um, so anyway so that's like the, the mental structure I'm working from 
and um, fuck, what was I saying? What was the context of, of me starting this? Um, collecting dashboards together as a whole organism. Yeah, yeah, but there was something prior to that. Uh, we were talking about the ability to mess up the dashboard with incoherence. Yeah, right. Okay, so why, why I'm saying that is that uh, dashboards that are incoherent with each other could potentially feed back into this whole idea and um, they can like um, not be as accepted or as, you know what I mean? Like as uh, there's, there's like an immune, an immune reaction to it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the whole should not uh, be susceptible to damage from um, runaway hmm. dashboards. Sure. Uh, and, and, Agreed, but then that's going to be, this goes back to me, this feeds back to the API slash interaction level, right? Like, mm -hmm. where is the level of trust developed? How do you define that level of trust in a system link, right? So, so, it, so um, the whole Grandmaster Coherent thing is should be entirely out of reach um, for like vast majority of all like pretty much all cases but the grandmaster coherence only <laughs> applies within so I guess are you envisioning a system per guild or yep 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 okay uh, like so if you have a system per guild which I agree I think that's you know essentially what you'd want and then potentially you're not potentially you're definitely going to then have systems within that guild that okay i as as the guild master we trust these systems as operating in good faith with mm -hmm. guild principles yep and but then you know obviously we have to go back we're envisioning this but then we have to go back to the bootstrapping yeah. of the guild principles to how you know how we how do you know if a node is in coherence with so imagine principles. imagine you bring a guild like that on board right um internally it's oh it's so self-coherent it's so beautiful like it's uh you know it's it's everybody's a master at what they're doing but then they start actually having conversations in your, the context of your guild right people start talking to them and they end those conversations religiously with i did not learn anything from these people All right yeah. so 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 while the internal coherence of of this guild in going to be one thing the coherence level of uh the other v guilds view of it is going to be like what the hell are they doing <laughs> so so just for a humorous a, a humorous break um, to that I think shows this concept though in real life is the example of martial art academies mm -hmm. and dojos <laughs> in that you can you can and we've seen these you see these videos right if I don't I don't, I, I do jujitsu Brazilian jujitsu okay um, for all, a number of I've years been interested as in kung fu since like forever there you go so it, I mean what you end up with is you end up with things that work and things that don't work. And in that case, you have a really testable hypothesis, which is all you have to do is engage in a context with at least, you know, some, some set of rules and you can at least find within that set of rules, who's actually, um, executed anything who can actually execute that right but within within each individual academy somebody could be seen as an expert within that academy and no one can beat them there and and their word is taken as as, as you know uh, mm -hmm. law law but when they come into contact with another academy that is developed in a different way all that stuff falls apart because it turns out their techniques aren't actually efficient to, to somebody Are you like some it Keep reminded me of one video I watched. Uh, there was this one old old guy that, that had that status within his. Uh, oh, they he, they just make people fall down by touching them a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those guys. They just yeah. touch and people fall down, and, and you're he, like, no, that's and, not and, that's and not I, a real thing. I think he yeah. faced an MMA guy, and he did not exactly knock him down. Somebody went down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, and that's. So, but then you have that, 
in the world of ideas, that's what it reminded me of when you were talking about that. Um, so how do you develop that? How are we representing that trust with those other systems and then those that interchange with those other systems, right? I mean, that's going to be a really important part of this. And I think that's part of what I was driving at with the API and or, you know, just how we how these other models can develop and how guilds so, and sub guilds can develop within themselves and yet tie right into right. these larger systems of coherence yeah, they're just going to be rated over time i gotta go make a hungry kid some food no that's okay hey thanks a lot for all your time yeah. zenia i appreciate it and we'll keep discussing i'm very interested yeah. I'll, I'll I'll be back. Uh, thanks yeah yeah i don't know if uh i mean we've already been going for almost it's uh, a while a couple hours there yeah, yeah so it might be a good time to <laughs> time for a break yeah i was thinking to get out for a walk or something like that time to time to wrap up for a little while but th that um yeah this has all brought me a lot uh farther along i think on where you and Zenny already were and awesome. i don't know maybe if anyone <laughs> if anyone makes it through any of this maybe it'll help um oh, yeah. elucidate some concepts yeah. for some other folks that are interested so i will post yeah. post it up very good. That's well, cool. thank Thanks. you, Brian. Thank you, Todd. And, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk more about this and I'm kind of going to mull over some things in my internal models of what I've been thinking about and maybe try and get yeah. some more of it onto something that's in a shareable, <laughs> perhaps cool. index card format. No. Yeah, nice. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited to uh, to kind of keep going on the, the uh, card definitions and stuff like that. I, I really want to figure out I like, agree. How, how the AO is shapes up to this as well. So like yeah uh, yeah a lot of a lot of exciting work to be done agreed and uh i think now's the time to do it <laughs> yeah yeah for sure <laughs> all right thanks cool. a lot brian hey, take Dad, care have, and have uh yeah we'll we'll be in touch thanks for sure see ya